back with the lift off. We do go. Dave Orton here for another go. It's Racing Post Light in association with our sponsors, Betfair, this afternoon. The final day of the York Ebor Festival will be popping to Sandown as well. And breaking news, there's some great racing at the Curra. Shall we take in the 310 there for you as well? Why not? We'll be the only people anywhere today giving that the real big. And it's the Futurity Stakes over there, of course. Really good racing. We've already seen an interesting two-year-old for Aidan O'Brien in the first day. Plenty of news about that to come. Don't forget the important business. This is an interactive show. Why don't you get involved? Let us know you're out there. <sighs> Last chance, of course, coming up for this summer festival. We're now, aren't we, on the downslide of the flat season. Will it be a Elter Skelter? Or would it be a nice, gentle slide? Let us know what you think. How's your York Festival gone? We want to hear from you. So 3.35, that's right, the Ebor is our last race today. Solving the Ebor puzzle. Love that front page. Let's get your one, two, threes in. If you're watching on Facebook Live, say hello, get involved. And anything on Twitter, look out for those clips being done by Ben Blackmore today, our social manager. Hashtag Racing Post Live. All right, let's go down. I've got a stellar panel for you. Two lively lads. Join me in the studio before we go back to Dublin. Let's see who it is. The Arch is with us. Danny Archer. Busy week, no doubt, for you, Danny. I've seen you doing things on Racing TV. You've mm -hmm. been covering loads of York. How's it gone? I think all right. Yeah, I think the big thing really from a social point of view was Baid actually winning impressively? I First mention. Kind of, Shall we ring a bell yeah. every time today? <laughs> I just think it kind of cemented it after you know last week we spoke a lot with the drone pilot and he thought it could have got beat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> but I think from a social and racing point of view, it's just good that he did hose up. Yeah, I, if Mark Oroski is watching, stellar performance from Mark in the studio yesterday. You've already thrown him under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Mark. I thought you got on with him last week. Uh, <laughs> Robbie Wilders, the anti-postman, joins oh, us. Oh yes. Back. You're, you've got something about you today, Rob. I can tell. Uh, I have something about me every day, don't I? Well, I think listen, let, listen, let's play on this because we're going to look at some some wild anti-post suggestions from earlier in the season. Always up for that. But yeah. You've had one highlighted. Everyone's been talking about Baid, of course. Yeah. yeah but Alpinista's one of your projects. Yeah, I backed Alpinista at 33 at the start of the season. Um, for? For the arc, of course. Uh, I thought that Torqueta Tassa form was red hot. She was always underestimated. They wait and see whether she could do it back home. She's done it now. So I think, yeah, she's a, a major player in that and probably the one to beat at the moment. And that was suggested to your legion of followers, of course. Uh, it was, yeah. So oh, hopefully right. uh, a few others got on as well. We'll find out what price she is as we go along then. Loads of talk about the arc. We've been talking about it all summer. Great to have the big hitter back, Barry Orr, who sits himself on a mighty ticket for the first weekend in October. Yeah. We, I'm sure we'll go into that as the show progresses, Dave. Yeah, well, uh, nice to be back on. And meeting's been brilliant so far. It's such a great... Uh, the names more it, it, it just goes from strength to strength every year doesn't it really and obviously Bayid has been the highlight for a lot of people he was just imperious magnificent and I'm sure we'll uh, we'll give a full airing on the thoughts about his uh, potential tilt at the arc it seems everyone bar his trainer wants to go that route well there has been a little changing of the goalposts already, Barry. We messaged, didn't we, straight after we said, oh, it doesn't look like he's going to go. However, we broke first thing that morning, maybe Irish champion stakes onto the British champion stakes, of course, on the 16th of October, I believe it is this year, the showpiece we have, or maybe, maybe, just maybe, they might go to the art, Barry, now. So, I don't know, what is it, five to four with a run on the sports book all of a sudden? Four to five now. What a run. He, he, yeah, he'd be odds on. If he goes to Ascot, what's he going to be a four to one on chance against maybe four other horses? It's only going to be a bit of a procession. If it's if it's all about commercial, the commercial operation of Shadwell now, well, then he won't go to the yard because they'll just cement his reputation with a, with a nice, easy win in the champion stakes. Um, but if it's a little bit more than that, if it's about enhancing his reputation and cementing it as a superstar, well, then he has to go to the arc, doesn't he? Step up to a mile and a half, um, emulate what his father did. And I, I'd say if Sheikh Hamdan was alive, he'd go to the arc. He'd love to have an arc winner. But it all depends on the commercials of it, doesn't it, really? And obviously, William Haggis is kind of dampening everyone's expectations and saying after each race, so I'll just enjoy it, just enjoy it. He looks a shell of a man at the moment that every time Bayeed runs, he's just a nervous wreck. He <laughs> manages it well. But he's like, he's like John Ox. John Ox absolutely left left a long shop after the arc after see the stars win left paris and he was he was absolute shell of a man after that campaign of that horse uh, as a three-year-old uh, it just takes so much out of the trainers you know to protect that unbeaten uh that unbeaten sequence and 
you can see it a bit, I think, in uh, in William Haggis. Uh, but fortune favours the brave. Go to Paris in October. Well, listen, let's get stuck into that then. This is the Racing Post Live. Say on that, the dust is settling. Thankfully, we know most of the news out there at the moment. We know the thoughts of the connection. We want to know the thoughts of you out there. We're going to have a poll as well, but we'll get to that. Now, Barry, back on Lockings Day, when Baid came out and strutted his stuff, we were all looking forward to it. I'd spoken to William on the eve of that, and he was saying, just want to get it out of the way now. And it's a long season ahead. And it's, it, it's thrilling, the constitution of those. But we looked into his pedigree, of course. You suggested that 50 to 1 for the art was a bit silly. Now, we got absolute pelters for that on what's known as racing Twitter. And people say, don't be ridiculous. We have these false gods, don't we, on Twitter? I don't want to mention, like, the jumpers, like Honeysuckle and Envoy Allen. But if you, if you badmouth these 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 horses, you get so much stick. But he's bred to be running over a mile four. He steps up to one mile two in the week. And finally, we see the seven-length demolition of one of the other best horses in the world. Now, it wasn't just you, Barry, that was looking at this. Look, we've got a nostalgic social from one of our, our regulars. Nesta said, after Baid won the Lockinge, that was, of course, in the middle of May, Ark is on the menu after that. He can stay, I reckon. It didn't look likely. It didn't look likely. But, Barry, hindsight's a wonderful thing. But I guess you were looking at, if he won over a mile two, as you might have expected, maybe not in quite such fashion this week, then it was a no-brainer. His price was going to collapse. Yeah, I'm just surprised that they didn't give him an arc entry all along. Just just to have it. And just to kind of manage expectations of people instead of um, William Haggis saying after Goodwood that, no, definitely not going to the arc. I'm, I'm putting a nail in that coffin. So... You know, it's probably a bit short-sighted by Sheikh uh, Hissa's um, um, advisors. You know, Angus called and William Haggis to, to completely rule out the arc right from the get-go, considering, like, on pedigree alone, he's he's sure to get the trip. And he's been so impressive in, in the Judmont. So, yeah, I think she's been badly advised there. But hopefully she's a, a bit of a sporting owner um, and that she decides that really, as a commercial stallion prospect, well, if he's to win the arc, he's going to look a lot better on a CV. And running around Ascot at one to four and beating the same trees he's beaten all season. I couldn't believe he was five to four on the sports, but before he ran in the Judmont for the uh, for the Champion States, whoosh that crashes down. Who's got that out there? Right, okay. Barry's had his say. We're going to look into the nuts and bolts of it for you. There is, a, of course, a commercial stallion point of view. Do they want that one more foot, mile four in there? All of a sudden, you're talking about the national hunt mares potentially. Shadwell, the dispersal. They, you know, they're trimming it down. They've got themselves potentially the next see the stars. Frankel at stud. That's going to have a big say on it, of course. But after the race, no, 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 we're not doing it. Now, all of a sudden, other races are being mentioned. Are you on the big ticket like Nitster and Barry? Are you with Robbie on Alpinista? Should he go to the champion stakes? We'll hear from you. We're going to get a poll up as well. Let's concentrate back on today, though. We've got plenty of time in between the races. Start getting involved, guys. Let us know you're out there. We'll give you your naps today. What wins the e-ball? One, two, three in the e-ball? Dare we go go that far? Let's solve that puzzle. The mighty Gomez comes on. 3.35 like this. I'm getting shirty today, Dave, he says. Of course, drawn the widest of all, the win-win-win machine, of course, that is get shirty in the Ebor State 3.35. But, Barry, before the 150, we must get some housekeeping out the way. Is the lucky 15 finally going to get on the move? Yeah, fingers crossed for the lucky 15. Let's get cracking on that, Robbie. I believe you're the glamorous assistant today. The first leg is going to be Wild Crusade in the Keep Melrose at 2.25. Our second leg is Sacred in the City of York Stakes at 3 o'clock. That's, um, uh, I think she'll get back to winning ways. And uh, 3.35, the Ebor, seven places on the Betfair Sportsbook here. Alfred Boucher, we saw him win already this week on the Knaves Mire. And our fourth and final leg at 2.05, four places on the Betfair Sportsbook there. Miss on San. Um, is the pick to get uh, her back to uh, to winning ways as well. She's uh, obviously only had the one run this season, but we're going to do it for a quid. It's six doubles, four trebles in the accumulator and four singles, 15 bets. We're going to do it for a quid each way. It means it's going to cost us, cost us 30 quid for the lucky 15. Lovely. Absolutely superb. So a quid each way for that. Uh, let's go down. There we go. Lucky 15. Here we go. That's what it pays, guys. Happy days. Loads of... Uh, Loads of enhanced place terms on the Betfair Sportsbook and our offer this Saturday and as every Saturday, um, Dave, as you know, is bet 10 on multiples and receive a £10 free bet. So if you uh, get involved in the multiples on the Betfair Sportsbook, bet 10 quid on multiples and get a free £10 bet 
on multiples. So uh, it's a pretty decent offer as well. So that will help cover uh, some of our losses on the lucky 15 and we don't manage to get any winners. Great stuff. And of course, it is great for the charity. If you're new to the show, as I say every week, Barry puts up a trade in every single race, seven races coming your way this Saturday. You don't have to play in every race, but if you wanted to do a little small outlay to try and get a big payday at the end of the day and I basically have some interest with us along the way, that is the way to do it. And it starts off at 2.05 with the something forgotten about mise en scene. She was thought to be a classic horse, wasn't she? Barry likes it. Could she bounce back? All right. Uh, and I, I love that pronunciation of the e horse, Al Alfred Boucher. It's, I thought it was, is it Boucher, is it Boucher? You said Alfred Boucher earlier. Boucher, yes. Well, we're going with Boucher. Yeah, it is Boucher. It's got to be Boucher. It's a sneaky Ian Williams plot, this. We see him back these horses up successfully quickly, don't we? Look, but look, we, we've got to get to the 150, guys. There's the market. Look, it develops before your very eyes. Now, we've got the... Very progressive, mighty Ulysses at the top of the market here, Barry. Um, hey, I don't know. I think one day, one day he's going to get found out. I'm hoping it's today. Yeah, well, there's going to be a bit of pace on here with Maurice Diamond, who's going to go off and try to set it. The favourite, just a little niggle of doubt I have about the trip for him. He's 2.02, though. He's just even money. Wouldn't be surprised if he's to go odds on. Alif Balia is uh, 3.55, 11.5. .5. Bashkarova, Sonny, listen, 16.5. Massa Kayla was the one I was liking it. I was going to back her win. I was going to back her each way because it's four places. Or it's, uh, it was three places on the sports book with the dead eight. There's only two places now because wouldn't you know, Cadillac is a non-runner. What we're going to do, Robbie, please, because it was at entry stage, eight runners and three places on the Betfair Exchange. It's still three places, the punters on the Betfair Exchange. So we're going to look at Massa Kayla in the three place market currently trading at 4.7 so over seven to two i'll have a bit of that definitely and um, ran okay in the derby settled well in the derby uh, was respectable enough finished uh, eight lengths off the winner again respectful in new market in the bahrain trophy was a little bit keen there the winner as as um frank the foreman the voltager since and was very disappointing in goodwood but again was very keen so i'm just hoping uh, maria's diamond setting a really good fractions here that we can get Massa Kayla settled, David Probert can, and that should run into a place at the very least. Yeah, I, I, do you know what, Barry? I hovered over Massa Kayla as well, who was, you know, thought to be a proper group one, two-year-old, of course, and we had Oshie Murphy on the show a couple of weeks back, and he, he spoke about that. He didn't quite found his metal yet, but he is interesting. Andrew Balding's hit the target a, a few times. He's a smart two-year-old. He won the he Denford was. as a two-year-old, you know? Yeah. Like, he kept best company. Ran in the Royal Lodge, wasn't beaten that far by Royal Patronage, you know. So, yeah, he's had some nice credential, uh, form credentials to his name this year. I just think the drop back in trip could be key for him today. Let's find out what the rest of the panel Barry, thought. Sorry, what, what stake would we like on Masakela? Yeah, we're 25 quid. 25, thank you. There you go. You've got plenty of time then to react to Barry. He's trying to knock this out the part. He's going against the Fav. I'm going against the Fav as well. Um, he just tends to win, doesn't he, Mike Euler season? Started off in Handicap Company Corp, but he actually started over in the Blue Ribbond trial at, uh, mm -hmm. at, at Epsom, of course, and he was far too keen through that. Look, look, he had them stone cold two furlongs out, and he, he has looked a bit of a short runner. Of course, Dan, that changed at Newmarket last time. He looked vulnerable and then fought back, and you like him today. Uh, I'd, I'd also, with Barry, though, I'm a big fan of Masakela back down to 1-1. Do you know who Masakela was? Aiden. We've done this before. Our regular viewers will know. No. He was a South African trumpeter. We called him a trumpetist. We invented that word. He's a jazz trumpetist. He was the top of his game. So will he be on song? Will he be hitting the right notes? Are uh, you a bebop could. fan? No. I'm a big jazz fan. Are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have been to Ronnie Scott. Yeah, I was going to say. I used to be a member there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I used to live about. Yeah, look, we, we mustn't go there, but I did. I used to be a member. Yeah, if we've never been to Ronnie Scott's before, take gap, you next time Barry's yeah. over, we'll take him. Sure, we were going to have a. Shall we? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We'll, and it might be a Masakela theme band going mm. on. But uh, you think Mike Ulysses? But, will yeah, all... so Masakela, a big nod. But I think Mike, it's just got the form over Al Flayla. I don't really understand just with that extra furlong. I mean, ah. beat, beat Al Flayla quite comfortably right. last time out. We love head to heads on this show, and this is the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I loved what Alf Leder did behind Marie, uh, uh, beating Marie's Diamond, sorry, at Pontefract last time. Two of his last three starts, if you're reading in your members club section today, your spotlights are the best in the business, aren't they? Maybe we get the spotlight up, I don't know. Weather Racing Post Live, download the app, of course. If you've not done that, please do it. Uh, it's free and it's you know the best in the business, but we get some spotlights out there as well. Um, he's missed the break on two of his three starts. Uh, 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 last three. The one he didn't was when he met Mighty Ulysses. Now, mm. it was a really muddling race when Mighty Ulysses won. And he was up there. I think he went a bit too soon that day. I think we saw the real horse at Pontefract last time. And there is pace in the race again, as Barry says. All he's got to do is follow Marie's Diamond 
and we will pick you up, Danny Archer. OK, well, that's fair from you, but no, I, I think Mighty Ulysses, you know, still has the hold on Alf Flayler based on that one run. Oh. run. So I can't uh, I can't desert the Dottori Gosden charge. you just got the feeling that they think this... I mean, this horse ran in the St James's Palace States. He's actually ran really well, didn't he? I, I'm with Barry. The extra furlong. He has looked a bit of a short run so far. The market still <coughs> likes him, though, Rob. What are you like? I don't know. I think he's too short here. I mean, my initial selection, Cadillac, isn't running. I thought... I don't know why you he's... You love Cadillac. It's like a, it's like a, yeah. a painful project for you, <laughs> Cadillac, isn't it? Well, I mean, that was essentially his first run for Philip Hart the Foy last You're time. You're going to keep going. So, yeah, I think definitely. he'll be hurdling. He'll have another day. Uh, another one I like, obviously, as you know, Sonny Liston. Yes. Uh, quite interesting dropping back down in trip. Uh, that was quite a good run at Goodwood last time. It's a complete cult shot for him after running the derby, but I thought he handled it quite well. Um, I mean, he's about 14 to 1. I thought he was a bit too big. I mean, ultimately, I thought Mike Ulysses was too short, and that was where I was looking, so I'm, I've had a place bet on Sonny Liston. Yeah, uh, Kills has gone places. for that in his Sizzlers, I think, hasn't Is he? It? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, I get it. I get it completely. He's having an up and down I, week, I think Bash Grove, like a lot of punters. I'll tell you what, Bash Grove has been absolutely backed off the boards there. She's a filly that Seven. I really like, Bash Yeah, Grover. I mean, it's one of those where if you take out the uh, Duke of Cambridge run, then she'd be... Well, probably about three to one. To that was I could. If Both you're on Bashkar over today, I guess, guys, that you're that you're looking into it. If you knew, her. I mean, we saw her come back on the show at Goodwood, and she just got touched off by Miss Fitzherbert, who runs later on in the card, yeah. uh, and who, who also flopped on her next start. Uh, but then she went to Epsom, and she really showed everything about her that day, and she beat Oscar, who's a really uh, was it uh, was it Oscar? No, it was uh, Potter Pover. That's it. The who's a bit? Park, uh... Who's a bit? Who also runs today? Who's yeah. a bit of a nutter. I mean. But, it, they turned her out too quickly at Ascot, didn't they? Yeah, it was 11 days. I mean, it just backfired. She, she was flat out. For My a, problem for with her here, Rob, is that yeah. she's got to give weight away. Yeah, it's going to be tricky. some really I good mean, three year old cops. Yeah, I mean, they're not exactly favoured, are they, the older fillies, by but, the weight concession? But here. she's the swinger, but, is she? Yeah, I mean, well, I sort of missed the price a bit. I mean, she definitely was value at about 12s, but. Yeah. That's, that's gone. I mean, let's see what Mr. Baid says himself then. William Haggis said to us, I'm not sure she'll run. She needs it to rain. I'm not sure it's going to. We'll make a decision in the morning. That's interesting, isn't it? Because Kills was asking everyone last night, what are they doing with watering at York? Because it's the grounds looks a bit funny, Danny, this week, isn't it? They've, it's, they've put on two to three overnight, haven't they? And it's typical York ground, you know, I call this. Some people are looking at it going, is that a bit soft underneath? Times have been either good, they've been quick. You know, so we'll look at this first race time and hopefully we'll get a good gauge from it. Thankfully, we're not starting with a two-year-old state, you know, event. Thankfully, we're not starting with a stay-in race. This should give us a proper time about the clock today. And they're obviously happy to let her take a chance. And also, Mel, if there's a new fresh strip of ground for racing today, I think uh, Amphia Lee was on Racing TV earlier saying about that. So, interested to see how that rides as well. You've been, a, you've been doing your homework. It's good to, it's good to see. <laughs> We, we had high hopes for you, Danny, and you're, you're just about meeting I'm not expectations. Sure. So, is there any other pace pressure for Marie's Diamond here before I go back to Barry for a last... It probably isn't, is it? Finest sound, maybe? That was the only one I could see probably giving Marie's Diamond something to think about up front. But, yeah, I think uh, Marie's Diamond could set it up maybe if you're Al Flayler. But I'm just hoping the Tories, they're in the van and then can quicken on. But we'll Matt have a sporting, is the player. I mean, we're playing for the trophy today, aren't we, of course? Mm -hmm. And I think this is going to stay here. But I will, I will begrudgingly pass it over to one of you if you get it right. Uh, let's find out. OK, Barry, they're going into the stalls for the first. Uh, even Money Mighty Ulysses, what is it on the exchange? Um, at the moment, currently trading on the Beffer exchange at 2.10, so 11 to 10, 4.2. Uh, Bashkarova's 6.8, and it's 22 bar. Masakela out there, massive 42. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think I, I, I wouldn't worry about that so much. I think it's probably a case of everyone zooming in, of course. How's your York been then? Let's hope it kicks off with a cracker. If it's not been your week so far, one more day to go. Don't worry. We're solving the puzzles for you here today, culminating in the e at 3.35. Sonny Liston then just playing up a little bit going in. Good luck, whichever way you play in the 150 then. Off we go. One mile one. It is the Strenzel Stakes. Uh, and let's see if somebody's going to step up and maybe have a go at the champion stakes a little bit later on. Now, glad to see Alfredo wasn't too bad away. Baskarova may be a little bit rusty if you were being picky. As expected, the pink jacket of Marie's Diamond goes straight into the lead. A horse that used to have a lot of back class. Roger Fell now, Danny Tudhope. Masakela, interesting. Change up of tactics here. Yeah, a horse that stays further. Let them stride on. Yeah, absolutely. He's a horse that can be a little bit keen, so let's see how he settles. Finest yeah. sound in third. Sonny Liston in fourth. Mighty Ulysses, another one that pulls. He's out the back as well. Again, Danny, they're slightly conserving him today. How are you feeling? Yeah, not bad at the minute. Frank, he's just got to try and send them a bit. But you are right, he always can be keen in his races. But interesting, this on Masakela kind of gone out, uh, pushed the button and trying to make all. This is Quickthorn-esque, Rob, isn't it? Yeah, he's got quite a big gap already. Um, 
Well, that's worse. No, it's not quite a quick fall. If, if he starts to extend now, it will be, but uh, I'd like to think he'll be reeled in. You look at Alf Flader, Barry. He's around about 12 lengths off this front-running leader who you're on. How are you feeling? And well's Alf in the market? You're not the one in front to keep galloping. So yesterday, you can give away weight, but you can't give away distance. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see. But your your favourite mighty Ulysses is 5 to 4 on now. Alflayla is 3.15, 14 Masakela. So Go they basically the think, side. yeah, they think he's going to fall in the hole. And here comes the cavalry. Sonny Liston. Liston. Go on, son. Look at Sonny Liston then, up there for, uh, up there for, for Wilders. I think I've been given too much to do fired. here. Oh, mighty Sonny, Ulysses is coming through, Dan. But at the moment, Frankie. still Masakela is holding him. Here comes Alflayla. Has he left it too late in Crowley? Finest Sound is there down the middle. Our Flader running around a little bit. I'll tell you what, Finest Sound right. looks he's... like he's back in a good place. Uh, Massacre's run a blind. He's falling in a Come hole, most of these. Our Flader's coming. Can we get this? This is going to be close. I think Alf is yeah. coming through. The trophy's going to Dave Orton in the first race. Let's hope it keeps that way. Mighty Ulysses, just a little bit flat, hasn't quite gone home. That is a horse going places, Barry Orr. Yes, El Flayla, finest sound. Is Masakela third, Dave? That's all I'm looking to see. Is Masakela <laughs> third? No, yes, I think he's just hey! third. I think so. Come on, finest here we go. Here's the, here's the slow mo. Come on, Barry, let's confirm this. It's on the nod. Marie's Diamond. Diamond could annoy you here a bit. Ooh. <laughs> Come on. Yes! Yeah, he's got it. I sure. think he's just got it. Oh, it's close. I wouldn't be so confident. Ooh. They all fell in a hole. Behind the bus, it was a bizarre race. Find a sound trade at low 1.54, two to one on. Your favourite never got into the race at all, although he traded shorter in running than his bet for SP. He traded at low one to two in running also. Masakela hit a low in running on the bet for exchange of 10. That's all. But the uh, you, you two in behind the winner who traded at two to one on or lower. Your winner hit a high at 38, Dave, mm. uh, for something small. Two quid on a 25, 20. 51 quid done at 20 on the winner in running. He's a very interesting horse, this going forward, I think. Uh, Owen Burrows. He's going to have a good f finish to the season, Owen Burrows. He's got some very good horses. He deserves it after Hookham, of course. Uh, this chap looks, he looked like he, he was in trouble, guys. I said, I think I've been given too much to do. Barry rightly called fine a sound, and the, and the exchange was screaming it. At this point, Danny, you had every chance on Mike Ulysses, and then whoosh. Three yeah, I, I think, as we said, two, two and a half out, Al Flayler looked in real trouble. But I think, you know, the races, Masakela set up a bit of a sprint to the line. They've all kind of fallen in a hole a furlong out. Out and he's just stayed on better than the rest. I don't think the favourites got home. A couple of them probably haven't got home, but Alf Layla clearly progressing with every run. Do you know who won this last year? Real World. Give us a, give us a, I was hoping to play a game there, Danny Archer. <laughs> Too slick, Sorry. I'm afraid, my friend. Real World. Yeah, I knew Is that. Is he officially the second best horse in the world? Uh, ooh. Well, I mean, I tell you what, it would take a lot of beating in the QE2. He's going to go there, isn't he? He sh well, he really ought to go there. Yeah. Did he go Good to a Champions Day last year? I don't think he did, did he? Is the ground a problem for him? Let's have a look. That time of year? Possibly. Possibly. Very soft. Won, of course, on the 2nd of October on Arc Weekend. He won the pre Daniel Wildenstein. Of course, um, yeah. On horrible ground. He beat the Revenant, who yeah, loves horrible fine. ground. Yes, Just good horses right. go on good ground. On, on any ground. He? And he will. Uh, is he second best horse in the world? Uh, oh. Well, he's the I only horse that's even got near. Well, probably probably uh, Desert Crown. He's probably. It's I know I've seen him three times. Mentions of, poor old G-Rod got a load of stick, didn't he, on, on, on social media this week. Did you see that? Did Straight he, afterwards, you all retweeted out there in Racing Twitter World, didn't you? And, ha-ha, let's go and bash G-Rod. You know, and let's face it, he said, I'm not sure he's a good horse, I'm not sure he's beating anything yet. I mean, the word yet was in there. Yeah, but he, he didn't say a uh, good horse. But, Rob, you stick your chest out, right? And yeah. you're in everyone, we need strong opinions. The problem with the world at the moment, and in society, and racing Twitter in particular, is that we bash people for having any form of opinion. Yeah. And you, you're allowed to be wrong. That's why I don't really get involved in Twitter, because people are nasty, man. Well, there we are. Absolutely, it can it's... happen. And you, you don't want to be nasty to Graham Robbo because I've met him and that's a lovely fella. Right? Yeah. Well, he just laughs at everyone. I'm not just saying that because that's my line manager. He was obviously right. <laughs> <laughs> he is your line manager. He is right. And Barry, we got a lot of stick about saying about the Baid thing, didn't we? But we're looking forward to real world coming back. Is this a horse that might have pretensions to Group One Company, Alf Lader? No, I wouldn't think so. I think that was an ordinary enough race. Cool. Cold. I, thought I, was I, good wouldn't even, I don't even think we'd quote him in any Group Ones. What would he run in? Well, I think he Q2. might potentially go to France, mightn't he? Could he go the Daniel real world route? 
Let's, what's he in? Let's have a look. Progressive three yard. I mean, he's readily reversed that form with Mighty Udyssey. Mighty Udyssey looks all over a miler, doesn't he? Yeah. Can we yeah. get that out yeah. of the way? Yeah. All right. Few of those he's not in anything to win it. No, he's not. Yeah. He's not. Burrows, I've got uh, a feeling Real World wasn't at this time last year. He just came out of the Hunt Cup miss, didn't he? And just improve him. Oh, look, I like that. I was a great deal. Not just because I backed him, but uh, Danny oh, Archer's like here to learn. I Burrows as well. <laughs> Burrows is 30% this season before that race. So he's got a very tough. good handicapper. I remember what the name is in a minute coming up. Of course, he's got Anmar, isn't it? That's yeah. a very Arifat good horse. That's what Barry put her last time, one as he liked on the old bridle. Yeah. And uh, that's a horse that's come out of handicap. It's got called, a horse called Tarib. Is oh, Tarib? yeah, yeah. In the, in the Everyone yellow. thought that the Haggis horse last time was unlucky against it. it I don't think it was. I think, it's, I, think it, I think it's won yeah. very well, that horse. And mm. that could be Cambridgeshire type bound. I need another Cambridgeshire horse, by the way. Golden Voice has just... Oh, you abandoned that one there. Haggis has had a shocker. Never mind, he's, everyone's Ooh. trumpeting him about Baid. What's he done with Golden Voice? I mean, anyway, a dream that's gone. All right, let's go to Sandown, shall we? Because the 205 is coming up, guys. Uh, really good racing today. Isn't it a little bit surprising, Barry, that one of their best two-year-old races is on this day, the Solario Stakes? Two yeah, it course. is. Four-hour clash, isn't it, really? Yeah. Again, it's uh, race planning, to, I think... Um, Hopefully it will be addressed sooner rather than later. I think there's a meeting among some of the big wigs in September. But Grand Dame, your favourite, 3.3 in the exchange. Fontenay is 4, 9, 4, Miss on Saint. Uh, you've missed Fitzherbert in there at 13.5. Potapova, who's been a little bit disappointing, is out to 25. Rise and start 27. And what we're going to do here, there's four places on the Betfair Sportsbook here, Robbie. So we're going to tick over to the Sportsbook. We're going to back Mass on Saint. We're going to have 25 quid each way her Um Oh, She's oh, currently sorry. trading at around 13 to 2. Like I said, four places on the best for a sports book. So 13 to 2, Mass on Sam. Um, the ground was a concern for her in the 1,000 guineas in Newmarket. They didn't run her. It was too lively. They went to Ireland with her instead. But the run was definitely too bad to be through. Um, she won the Prestige last year in Goodwood, Dave, if you recall. And she ran well in the Phillies. My went fourth to Inspiral. So she has a bit of class. I don't know what happened to her in the Curra. Obviously, she's been held up. But they're aiming for a good autumn campaign with her. Um, this will get her back started and hopefully she can outrun her odds. Start of a really good card then today at Sandown and the Atlanta Stakes. You, Saffron Beach, of course, won it last year. We all know what she's gone on to do this season. You do see very, very good fillies there. Go there. Uh, Sir Michael Stout, a dank when it a couple of years ago. Voracious. Al Jazi, persuasive. Fintry came over for Andre Farb as well. Uh, all right. So, mise on scene. I must admit, Barry, I've had a little bit on her as well. She's not my headline tip in this, but I, I remember speaking to James Ferguson pre Guineas weekend. She had to to miss that with a temperature or something and then I thought it was a tough ass coming first time back they, they could have her right I wasn't totally sure about a draw in stall seven that's what slightly put me off but uh, he's had a good week of course uh, Rob hasn't he with Derville Legend who's yeah and um, old El Bodegon run quite well as he well. Fought, he's making well, yeah, his way not, back isn't he yeah, El Bodegon yeah not wasn't his ground at all dreadful so. name to pronounce that isn't it again it's like Alfred Boucher isn't it is it Bodegon <laughs> Bodegon Oh, he should know. He's a group one. I'm going to Google it while Probably you... Want to be body gone. He's a small horse and he just needs to get back on that winter ground, I think, but we could come his way. Before we you... go down the line, Barry, uh, with other tips there, we've got, we've got a great card at the Curra today. Reminder, we are taking in the 310, the Futurity States. Uh, future stars there abound, potentially. Uh, we saw one in the first, didn't we? Was it Hiawatha won the opening maiden, as he liked? Hiawatha, yeah, he ran around a bit, still very green, was cut from 33 to 1 into 25 to 1 for the Derby. You saw that, didn't you? That, yeah. Yeah, 1.2 million. He didn't have to be brave, did he? No, he didn't have to be brave at all. Very good. He uh, danced in. Can confirm that El Bodegon means the wine cellar. Does it? Yeah. What does mise en scene mean? It means everything in shot. This is, uh, we're going back to GCC media studies right here. Yeah, very so good. We're talking about the mise en scene of, uh, you know, so the mise en scene in here, we're seeing, we're seeing race of post lights, we're seeing Robbie, Danny, Dave. We are mise en scene. We are, yeah. <laughs> oh, are, are you with this? Yeah. Oh, no, no, sorry. I think Grant... <laughs> yeah. I, I was having a good look at her, but I'm just worried about the uh, the absence. Is she going to be right? I mean, obviously, she was the best of these at two, for sure. She could still be different class, though. I think yeah, Barry's could right be. about this. There are I, a couple in here that could bounce back. I was back just very impressed by Grand Dame last time, beating Oscar. I think that's... Well, Oscar has come out and not done the form any It's hard before, not she? to think that is the, the hot form line, yeah, isn't exactly. it? Yeah, exactly, and it was over the, the course and distance. I mean, they chucked her in the deep end in the coronation stakes. I mean, just just running her there on her first start was a, sort of quite a big statement for Gosden, I thought, anyway. I missed so, the social uh, then, sorry, guys, from uh, uh, from Hugh Masson saying about York. We will get back to that, Hugh. Yeah, I'm with you on Grand Dame. Yeah. I don't like the draw I think she in could nine. be shorter. 
I don't, well, well, at least at least all the protagonists are drawn right with each other, aren't they? I was at Seven, Ascot eight, on Cigaro Day, the day she beat Mukadama. And then she got beaten by Fontaine, or I guess that's why she's pretty short in the Montic Market Fontaine yeah. at York. Uh, she then no show at Royal Ascot uh, against Imperia stablemate in Spiral. Good to see her back on Sunday, wasn't it? And then she beat Oscar. Oscar runs again today. In France. I mean, it's like, it's, like, it's the group version of Mondemage. It's just yeah. always out, isn't it? What a great aggressive She actually reappeared quite late, didn't she? She reappeared at, I think, Carlisle. Filly, isn't but she? then she's run about seven times in the last two and, months. And as either wins or goes very close. Yeah, oh, yeah really good. Filly. I think that's, that's rock solid four for yeah. Grand Lane. I mean, Fontaine's beat her by, uh, what, was it a, a head at York? Um, but that was Fontaine's fourth start, Grand Lane's second start. She's improved a lot since. So I think she should uphold the form. The Flying Norman, as you say, is mise en scene. If she's back to her juvenile form, then uh, she'll give Grand Dame something to think about. The absolute line, if you were writing, you would call her the fly in the fly ointment, wouldn't you? Yeah. It's an underused phrase. Actually, it's probably not an underused phrase. <laughs> it probably it? is. We, we all say it quite a lot in writing yeah. and stuff. It, well, we wouldn't quite call it a cliche. Uh, Danny Archer. The very nice beast at uh, Curra there. Very nice. Another Out of one. hearts cry, continuous. Newcomer afraid no Brian has won very nicely. He's cleaning more up. more in the saddle. Um, Oscar third to check and challenge today. So Willie Knight's back in business. Oh, that over one did Deauville. it in France. Um, so I thought the form of that was strong and interesting that you and Robbie were both on about, was it Queen Aminatu, the, who was in that race, obviously Frank the Form, but I'm with Fontaine after winning the okay. Michael Seeley. Um, I think ran quite well behind Nashua in the Nassau last time and probably didn't get the trip and raced freely, but I think back down to a mile, I think Fontaine can uh, confirm the form with Grand Dam. But mise on scene mm. is interesting, but it's more, as I think Robbie said, the layoff would be the concern. Hmm, I'm humming away here. Uh, mile two, wasn't it, of course, in the Got, got to give a shout to, um, at a bigger price, Nazarka um, for Jane Chappellheim. The, the handicapper might have got a grip now, but won so easily. She could on have Friday won another night go at handicap, market. you know, I think. She probably potentially could have done. Uh, they're now on that black hunt type, aren't they? Jane Chappellheim, we know, can do this. Won the race last year, of course. Jason Watson, big hour coming up for Jason Watson. He's got a race in the Solario Stakes as well. The Solario Stakes won by some of the greats. Are we going to see it, of course, at 2.40? Let us know. Keep the selections coming in. Uh, all right, you've gone down then. Two for Grand Dame. Uh, mise en scene for Barry. Bit of everything. And Fontaine. So between us, we cover the top three in the market. That's great, isn't it? Oh, we've got the winner. We've got the we've winner. Got the winner. winner. We've got the trifecta. There are some interesting horses in here. Miss Fitzherbert, who beat Bashkarova at Goodwood. And everyone expected her to kind of do the same when they met last time. But she, she just bounced out. You know, Huey Morrison, George Rook on from five, she could bounce back. Bounce the Blues, I thought was interesting. If I had to have a trifecta in this race, it would be Grand Day, mise on scene, and I'd chuck her in. She ran a lot better than the seventh suggests at Goodwood last time. She's a horse that hasn't won yet for the Baldings, but she's finished second in half of her starts room, and Dane O'Neill from stall one. If you wanted a bigger price, I wouldn't put you off that. She will win a race this year, it's got but to, I think she, she needs a bit of rain. A bit of softy. Once she gets soft ground, she'll win that a race That was her group win in Ireland, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. Just watch that back. <clears> You've got a little bit of time in the members' club. It's, it's a bit deceiving, and I do like a low draw at Sandown. That's the only thing that's put, putting me off from sort of nearly napping Grand Dame. Uh, Barry, they're going in. They all look a picture down there in Isha. What's the market saying? Yeah, Grand Dame's really strong at the head of the market. 3.2, 4.3 Fontaine. Miss on saying absolutely friendless. Out of 13. Um, <laughs> After that, uh, Nazaka is 10, Miss Perturbid 11. That's really strong. 12.5 bounce the Blues and 24 bar them. Thank you, Barry. What did we make of Quickthorn, Barry, yesterday, of course? The defections, as we know, no Strad, no True Sham. But my goodness, wasn't he impressive? Yeah, he was. He was. He got it soft up front, didn't he? He put it to bed after about 12 furlongs. and They couldn't. You just can't give away that sort of distance in any sort of race, really. Uh, they couldn't reel him back in. It just spent too much energy just trying to get near the horse. So, yeah, he's done it well. But three of the top, uh, the three top stairs in the UK and Ireland weren't in the race. So, um, yeah, it's hard to make know what to make of the form. If you're being perfectly honest, I don't think Kiprios would be uh, would have been shaken down and cooling more at the thought of a uh, quick point. They're like two boxers, Stradivarius and Trucian, aren't they? They just don't like each other. And seemingly, they don't want to race against each other mm -hmm. either. Uh, Andy Sim, great to have you back on Andy. He says, Fontaine starts my Yankee. All right, great stuff, Andy. Good luck. What's the rest of them? I'd like to know that. Uh, all right, great stuff. Keep your socials coming in. Good to have you with us this afternoon here on Racing Post Live. The final day of the last flat, well, the last big flat festival, isn't it? As they try and yeah, get Yeah, you can't recall the St. Leisure won a festival, could you? <sighs> What's the it's meeting? Good point. It's bordering on one, isn't it? Yeah. Irish Champions Weekend. 
It's not a festival. It's is two it? day, but I, yeah. Doncaster, I suppose, is a festival. But the, the first day is a bit weak, isn't it? It's a bit light. First day is poor. Yeah. There's a got Scarborough Stakes, isn't there? Yeah. In there? That's Legends, Legends race. Isn't it? Yeah. I yeah. love the love it, but it's um, posty riding in that. Could, we should have asked him. Right? They could. Chuck he nearly won it last year. <laughs> That's the sort of thing. Like, like this sort of race would, would go well in a, in a day like that. Derby yeah. quotes coming all over the place from the Curra Barry. Two races down. Aidan O'Brien's laughing, isn't he? Yeah, again, he's got a Derby quote there. Thirty-three to one for the winner, um, and thirty-three to one for the Guineas as well. So uh, continuous. Hmm. What did we make of the two-year-old races this week? I'll tell you what, serenading at Sandown, by the way, if you're wondering why we're filling here, serenading is taking ages to get in one of the outsiders for James Fanshaw. Uh, let's hope Whoa. she does. Ooh. Oh, she don't fancy it at all, does she? No. no. I do like Noble Star, Dave. Traldean won well, but I think Noble Star could be a he serious looked, He did beast. everything wrong. I mean, Royal Scotsman was a bit flat, wasn't he? Uh, you could knock the form a little bit, but he didn't. Uh, that was impressive yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. And, uh, I mean, Marshman's run a very good race as well. Oh, yeah. It's good form. Man. Yeah, well, I think it is. Two very good juveniles. Well, we see them both in the uh, middle part, do you reckon? We, we, we better had. Um, they'd be, oh, there's always this obsession of trying to stretch horses yeah, out. I don't know if you're actually to step either of them up to seven. Yeah, I don't know. But, yet. but the Dream Cup was worth such a lot of money this year. It was yeah. proper field, I think. And yeah, good was. to see. Because a lot of people hit Noble Star with a stick, didn't they, after that comeback at Newmarket. Well, if you listen to Charlie Appleby, he said, well, look, we were happy with it because he obviously had his problems. So it's good. To yeah, just, that it was, like a good novice, that was very it? much a prep, wasn't it? I mean, Millstream ran well in uh, the Yes, race didn't quite week. get home, did it, in the yeah. Aiken? I mean, yes, yeah. Charlie there, looks all right, doesn't there he? There is an Appleby beast, though. He was interviewed yesterday, mm. which he wasn't giving away. That he thinks is better than um, Mobile Star. Could it be Flying Honours? Who won it? Did you Maybe. see that last night? Yeah, that one very nice under the boiler. Um, Oshin Murphy's nap for us earlier in the week. It went off, it's not Oshin's fault. It, it, it went off twos on. I think you've probably seen a future classic course there, potentially. Uh, we've got Breeders' Cup coming up, haven't we? Of course, two year olds could go over to uh, Longchamp as well. And then we've got the Future Champions weekend. I always say on this Saturday, God willing, we'll be with you every Saturday in 2022. And my senior producer, Kieran Thurl, will pull me up on this because Christmas time mucks that up, doesn't it? Yeah. We're actually doing a Sunday and a Monday. So I've been misleading you this whole time. I don't know what day Christmas falls on this year. But... Sunday, isn't it? Uh, it is Sunday. I think it is. Okay. I think it is. Yeah. yeah don't want to work Christmas Eve. Right. Really. Well, there's nothing on Christmas Eve. No, <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful day it's in racing, nice isn't bit. it? Christmas Eve. Nice break for us. <laughs> I think all the pages are written, aren't they? We can just sit back yeah, and enjoy. Always a, a half of, day at the racing post. That's one you want to work. A bit of count, eggnog. Yeah, exactly that. It counts as a full day, but you get half shift. Oh man, the whiff of jumpers in the air, isn't it? But there's still much to come on this flat. And like I said to you earlier, are you expecting? A real Alton Towers dive on the oblivion. Is it going to be a helter-skelter down or is it just going to be a nice tame out? I don't know. The, the middle of the flat season seemed to get a lot of stick, didn't it? Small fields, clashes we didn't have, but I don't know. I think yeah. it's been a good week. It's just going to happen every year, though, isn't it? Small fields. We're so, so thankful to have that by performance, aren't we? Yeah. Because it is why you get out of bed, isn't it? You know, race is not a lot of good news out there, as we said, but life-affirming, someone called it in one of our email <laughs> bulletins. Maybe a bit strong. I think it was Sam Hendry, probably, or someone like that. Is <laughs> someone life on that affirming. team that writes it. Yeah, life-affirming. That was a mental performance. The prize life money's the thing, that I think, Dave. You know, the prize money's so much better than some of these other meetings. It's like William Darby says yesterday, they invest a lot of their media rights money into their prize money. So are there a lot of tracks which just aren't doing that? Yeah, take note of York then, everyone. <coughs> um, but again, as Hugh Masson says, it's just such a difficult track. Half, I know loads of people have struggled to find winners this week. This is the place to find them. Some of us are off to a flyer. We've got the second race of seven coming up for you. Sandown, Isha, another grade one track. And what's the ground going to be like there? Can you get the time for me, Rob, while we're doing this? At the first, please, at York, if you yeah, don't sure. mind. That's why Rob's in. They're in then, finally. Uh, only a five-minute delay. But we're all right. We've got plenty of time between races today. And good luck wherever you're playing in the Atlanta Stakes. Off we do go. Don't forget, it's a right-handed turning track at Sandown. That's why they like on decent ground, which it is thought to be there today. An inside draw. Now, we're looking for the Fav. She's coming out from stall nine. Rob Havlin, I think, is going to have the luxury of tracking Fontaine and getting a decent early position. Uh, out the back, Potapova. It looked a bit of a after you, sir. No one really wanted to make it. So Andrea's just gone on and made it. And How are you Dave feeling well, about that? You're on the front runner. Not that crazy but you probably don't want to be robbed do you something pulling for its life uh, in, in midfield no certainly not i very much like where grandame sat here mise on scene barry's got a beautiful position yeah that's a nice pause as well yeah she's a little bit fresh but grandame has the box seat there racing 
uh, and following nicely forward. They're all travelling well in themselves. It's going to turn into a sprint, isn't it? It's a long way home off that home bend as we're going around this famous home bend. We're looking at the ground. Let's, again, Andrew Andrew Cooper's done a good job, I think, and he's, he's, he's coming off the top a little bit, but glorious surface there. Fontaine leads them in then. Grand Dame, the favourite, is well pounced uh, right in second. Roman Miss, the horse that's probably been overlooked in the market. Miss Fitzherbert's there. Mise en is getting a shake of the reins now. Uh, let's have a look at some of the Nizarka's there. What's catching your eye, Rob? Uh, Grand Dame look like she's going to put us to bed. Absolutely so, tanking. What is she on the exchange? Well, oh, these two have gone on. Go on, Fontaine. I'll tell you what, Fontaine, oh, she's going to do her, it. I think. This is just a, this is a Gosden horse potentially going place. I think Rab hasn't gone yeah, for it yet, the go. fab. Mise on scenes, just not finding her feet. Now, Potter Pover could outside, be the one over man. the top. Yeah, me, is she coming? Don't, don't tell Nisa me this line, is the day. Nisa line. The Potter Pover yeah, finally are, oh, you kidding? Nice. We yeah. have, oh, what a horrible, How's horrible individual. What's happened? Ew, if you're on that Potter Pover cliff, let's hope you haven't jumped off yet because she has returned to form the master that is Sir Michael Decent. Stout. She has had cloth between her ears, Barry, on about five occasions this season. Not today at Sandown, it all clicked. No, it all clicked for sure, yeah. She was a big price as well. She had a bet for her SP of 24.6. Grand Dan traded at a low of 1.17. The 6 to 1 on. Missing, saying the horse that I back. Stayed on well at the finish, actually. Uh, an autumn campaign for her. She will be worth looking uh, looking for next time out, especially with a bit of giving the ground. That was a, a promising return to action from her. But yeah, we've uh, we've fallen for Potifo a couple of times oh. on this show, Dave. And, uh, no one was with her today, unfortunately. No, absolutely. As, as, as dance and big dancers went to Ireland last time, we thought that might be the day. Went to Epsom, of course, when it caught the eye. It's, it's, a, it's always been a very promising horse, that. I wonder whether Grand Dame looked a bit reluctant to be up there, as you said, after you, after you. Yeah, I don't know if there's any real excuses. I'd Fair think. enough. Yeah, I mean, that's that quite annoying, isn't it? It is Speaking annoying. 1.17. Oh, that is a cat burnt. Cat in the cash, but... Uh, Nah, that's one for the one for the bookies. I mean, Havlin thought he I had. Mean, it, really, didn't he? I mean, she's gone off at twenty-four points for one of that ability. We've, we've can't really knock the form, can you? Missed one a bit there, haven't we? I think look, Potter has just done. I mean, Swagger's has got a good record in this race, but I think you'd have to be. Look, who was with it? Was anyone out there? I mean, she'd run four times and second on the all-weather, eye-catching at Epsom, then terrible back on the all-weather, and then terrible in Ireland as well. But yeah, I call yeah, her a master for The ability's good always there, but just. Form's been way too patchy lately. Can't mark, we can't argue with that form though, can you? You know, if you look at it just strictly yeah. on paper, Grand Dame, Fontaine, and Miss Fitzherbert in in that order, you know, she's she motored. It'd be interesting to see the sectionals at the end of the day about that. Oh, you wanted the time though. for York, didn't you? Yes. <clears throat> what is it? Yeah, one minute forty-eight for the first. Forty-eight what? seconds fast. A point. <laughs> sorry. Point four eight. Forty-eight seconds. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah. Point four eight. <coughs> Someone's on the PlayStation. Um, Okay, so what are we looking at? In your humble opinion of the ground there, according to the oh. first race test? Oh. I'm no, ta I'm no <laughs> expert Pretty quick, on that, Barry. <laughs> Fast, yeah. yeah. Go on, then. All right, so fair enough. Well, they, put they only put three mil on last night, didn't yeah, they? She's had to evaporate in no time. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Having been at a course when I've seen exactly what sort of two to three mil is, it just looks like so much water they're putting on. But anyway, look, that sand down dump. We've had one from York. We're cooking here with gas. I'm even watching Killarney at the moment. It's like Willie Mullins is going to win the first there. Good day for punters. Are you enjoying it? Let us know you are out there. How's your week gone? What are you expecting from the day to come? 3.35, our last race of the day is the Ebor. We're keeping an eye on the Cara. We're keeping an eye on France, Deville, of course. Uh, we've got the pre-morning there tomorrow, haven't we? Persian Force going. Indeed. What's going Lam on? Franco in the saddle now. James what? Dawes injured. What's going on with that? We've got 10 minutes till the next at York. What's going on with uh, 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 Ross Ryan and Crazy, really. Uh, yeah, I don't really understand. I mean, Were you on the desk yesterday it. when that was coming in, that news? No, nah, no, nah, I saw my phone last night. I mean, what's, what's, what's really the thought process there? Oh, I it's suggested using about the best a month available. ago he was in my top three jockeys. Oh, yeah, he did, right. didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Let's say they haven't got rid of him. He's only on like There's a temporary internal, internal investigation. investigation. I mean, that could mean investigation. anything. Investigation? Do you reckon you might have done something? Well, they said that they suspended him from riding this week. It was all a bit of a mess, isn't it? Really? He was going to ride, he was supposed to go to Sandown yesterday or He's somewhere today, on Friday. Though, in and then he was going to go to York. He went to York instead. Rossa came out and said, I thank them for everything. They took <clears> my career to the next level. And then Kia came out, Kia Grabshin, of course, the, the football agent to the stars. Tevez, all that lot. He came out and he basically said, I don't know what he's on about. I'm disappointed. So that one will rage on, but we are talking about one of the future stars of the saddle. He's going to be, you know, when, uh, uh, when unfortunately the old guard retire, he is the future, that bloke. He's that good. 
Uh, it will... You get that, don't you, where they say we'll use the best available. I mean, he might and just, he might just keep using it. Frankie's in, yeah. Could this be a thing? Uh, what I was Frank, Could this Frankie be a fallout retained. of Frankie and Gosden at York? Uh, uh, Ascot, sorry. Could this... Except, listen, know, someone's going to snap up, Frank, and it would be just the sort of style for Ammo to well, have Frankie's a riding Torquay Tortasso, very elegant. Ah, no, you've got a pair of yeah. force. What's that about? I don't, is he the big... You know, he's now this bit... I, I don't really understand it. He's got all three rides. I think Torquay Tortasso runs soon, very elegant tomorrow as well. He's coming in for all the big rides. I mean... He's supposed I'm to be riding sure. the, the Melbourne Cup winning mayor, of course, in the arc, isn't he? He's supposed to be committed to that. Yes. But he's now riding the, the, the last year's arc winner in a trial. Mm. You think Which I think this a bit, is a retirement party? I don't know, maybe. He's just picking up these rides out of nowhere. It's like um, the, the glory days of the Trev when he was uh, with, those, with those connections. It's he a bit was strange. He was mustard on a horse called Fantastic, Fantastic yesterday at, uh, at Newbury, mm -hmm. a half-brother to Cracksman, who was a, a brute of a horse and a big old baby. And Frankie was his absolute best getting that one over the line yesterday. So, look, let us know what you think about that, what's going on. There's some strange things, aren't there? Uh, just before we go on, I'd like to give you a chance to get involved with the Members Club. If you're not a Members Club member, try and beat the new season rush. I guess that's what it says here on my script. That must be the jumps coming up. The new season rush, I'm not sure. But whatever it is, when you want to subscribe to the Members Club, yeah, I'm going to say it for a very limited time, 4 99 only. Uh, and believe it or not, we throw a Racy Post notebook chucked into that. How can you refuse? But you've got up until August the 26th to do that, guys. And if you're not on it, I keep saying these sales. Uh, there is a link, I think, uh, uh, you can get it as well. There you go, it's coming up. Uh, it says the link in the description there as well. <coughs> you can find it out there, of course. 4 99 up until the 26th of August, which I think is next Friday, isn't it? Yes. 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 I'm one of these annoying people that ask questions half knowing the answers. I'm not, I don't <laughs> not always know the answer, I'm relying on you. need that reinforcement from someone I do. else. Absolutely, the assurance. But there yeah. you go, it's out there. All right, OK, back to York we go. It's the Melrose Barrier. It certainly is. So come your favourite at 4.8. 5.4 Wild Crusade. Al Nafir is 7.4. 13 bar at the moment. Nuzret, um, Mikey Sheehy in the plate is an interesting one for Joseph O'Brien coming over from Ireland. But I like the top weight, Wild Crusade. Uh, he was gelded after his second Al Karim in York. Um, he beat Warren Point, a horse that I backed in a good handicap in Goodwood that won. He beat him in a three-runner affair mm. in Ascot. Now, he hung a little left under pressure that day, but he ran out a very, very easy winner. This is only be a seventh race. He's very unexposed. Now, the mark of 102 doesn't look too lenient, but you'd be really hoping that this guy's going to go on to bigger and better things at Wild Crusade. Now, having said that, there's some, there are sure to be some really ha well-handicapped horses in here. But what we're going to do, please, we're just going to play him on the exchange. He's currently 5.4. We're going to set our own odds here. Look at the back of my 5.6. That will go over into the lay section. We want to have 25 quid in them, Robbie. It will go over into one of the pink boxes for someone to come in and lay us that bet. We can reassess it. When you're setting your own odds in the Betfair Exchange, you can constantly reassess, go back, have a look at the market, see what you think. And if we, if we don't get matched at 5.6, we can reassess and, uh, and maybe get matched at 5.5 or 5.4. Wild crusade for the boys in blue. And William Buick then, uh, yeah, when in doubt. Not a bad way to play it. And it is, it's interesting, Barry, isn't it? You've got that form line about horses you backed and stuff. This probably potentially is yeah. one that's just going to step up later on, isn't it? Yeah, you'd think so. And I really, really rate that Warren point that won the handicap in Goodwood that finished uh, behind them that day in Ascot. I, I really do like that horse. So, um, And they're not as scared to geld these horses early doors no. and keep them on the go, which is interesting. You know, he's only a three-year-old. Obviously, they said, right, uh, give him the clip and... And we'll we'll have a good uh, a good campaign. He's going to be a cup horses in in, se in uh, you know next season and the season after probably. Horses like Yabir, of course, who are the uh, yeah. of course, and Kamari, who's, who hasn't really got on with it, but he won the Queen's Vase. It does seem to be a bit of a thing at the moment. Derville Legend, of course, who won uh, the Great Voltager in the week, he can't run in the Ledger because he's a gelding. So off we go to the Melbourne Cup. Uh, on the first weekend of November. Charlie Appleby, uh, to give you a little bit of backup on, on Barry's selection, he's had three runners in the Melrose. Two have won. They were Ghost Watch. Got a feeling he was a gelding as well. And Secret Advisor. Two horses that went on their travels a little later on. That's not the only horse they've got in there. They've got Al Nafir in here, quite interesting, and Dittori is on. But Danny Archer, come on, third time lucky, old son. I like two at a bit of a bigger price. Soul Stopper, first off, for the like boarding him. team. Obviously, won the, his last two. Uh, Coltrane and uh, the other horse that won it last year, I think, uh, Valley Forge. He's on a hat-trick in the race. So he's on a hat-trick in the race. Really impressed last time out when stepped up to this trip. 
Stayed on really strongly. OK, got to go again here off a higher mark, but I like Kim. And the tricky one I do find is this KS Chorister, because they were going to come here straight <laughs> away uh, instead of going to Goodwood, but they took that in. OK, Benoit Delassert was taking five off. So interesting to see how she gets on, but I can't not have a little bit on her as well. But she looks all over a stayer, doesn't she? Yeah. They were che they're such good cherry-picking from the Menuzier stable with this one. I went to... I mean, look, it was on at 12s on at times, wasn't it? But it won in just cakewalks, wasn't it? And... Um, Oh, she's been great since she she got off the market Yarmouth. Off of, I think it was off a of market 53. Here she is on 92. Solcom goes down to the start for a, a trainer that's won this twice in the last 10 years as well. William Haggis, he's uh, still the fav, isn't he? Of course, big eye catcher at, at Glorious Goodwood last time, but he will not want to be messing around at the start like he did last time. Rob, what do you like? Uh, a couple of big prices, Dave. Um, Inverness, first of all. For, yeah, that was a really good run behind Secret State at Goodwood last time. Uh, denied a bit of a clear run. A couple of furlongs out as well. I think he's going to be better over this uh, two furlongs extra. He's got a bit of one mile six form already at yeah. Ascot. Behind Bagdor, I saw me and Rodders like quite Good a horse, lot. that. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm also interested in Nosrit coming over for O'Brien. Golden Horn, I think there's a bit more to come as he gets another couple of furlongs. And uh, yeah, I just I sort of like his profile. I think it's the sort of race to play at the price, to be honest. This is an Alfred it's Boucher. wide open, to be honest. Is it Nosrit? Is it Nuzre? Uh, Nuzret. Oh, I think he's... No they say... Uh, Nuzrits has been the pronunciation in Ireland. I Are you putting yourself yeah, forward to call the Melrose here, Danny Archer? That's it, if he's I need done. To. Nuzrit was a very bizarre horse because, you know, for a social media man, he was always went off short prices and he was an easy one you're ready to clip up and for some reason he just could not get over the line. Oh, I mean, this he, is one that you had to delete. Yeah. Or so, well, he shouldn't of. have won. I mean, the last time he beat, I think, over the rainbow, who was really short price, Raiden O'Brien, and he actually was really impressive. Yeah, I mean, so he's really a one impressive. To, he's a tricky one to, to gauge, Nuzrit, because he should have won... Two or three times. Well, that was that. only his second start at a mile four, Nuzrit, Nuzray, however you're going to put it. And the time right. before that, he stepped up to Nuzray and he got beaten a nose only. So, yeah, he's just one of these backward ones, isn't he? But he could be. I like him here. I've got him on top. Nuzray is Turkish, okay? Ah. Nuzray means the help of God. Well, oh. we, 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 and also, we uh, do you remember, remember the fella who made a splash online a few years ago called Salt Bay? Gonna yeah. Hurt. That's his first name. Oh, base salt bay. Really? Nazare. Is, is it? That is Nazare Gotcho. Is it? Is it? Is this it? Is why Google is such a good tool. <laughs> Nazare looks a good each way bet. That's what you get here on Racing Post Live. <coughs> uh, Nazare for Andy Sim. Paul Keeley's gone for this as well. Barry gave it a mention too. Racing Demons 464. I'm looking this way, by the way, guys, because I've moved the monitor around it. Mainly to help me. You saw last weekend it was a mess. Uh, Temporise. He's interesting. Each way 33 to 1, each way from moi, says Racing Demons. A good buy winner for SDS. Yeah, oh, is this is his final weekend. We'll get to that, uh, Dan. George Murray, winning connections, get a purple jumper for the 225 at York. Ha <laughs> ha. Hmm. Purple jumper. Oh, That's Mel Rose. Like Very good, George Murray. <laughs> Very good Murray. from George Murray, that. Do you think Keith's well, there giving the price? Actually, more of a yellow jumper nowadays. Do you see what he was wearing in a few weeks ago? You've trolled him. You've got into his mind. You yeah, own it. If, if you're going to go for another one, don't go for yellow. <laughs> yeah, it's it's mustard, stand, isn't it, he wears? Yeah, but... The man, the, the man is sure. pretty much from Inverness. He's going to need help with his wardrobe. Doesn't isn't always it? have to be a jumper. <laughs> no, bless him. It's like it's like it's painted on, isn't it? Like Lego man. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, but this is the Melrose, of course. This is this is the future. This Ebor horse, isn't it? This is the future stayer in the pack. Could it be Solcom? He's a big beast, Solcom. And since they put on the blinkers and Holly Doyle, he's he, again the market really likes him. Still, Barry, do they? Yeah, he's 4.3, Wild Crusade 5.3, Alan Affair 7, 8. He's really strong now, Dave. The other um, Gaddafi one with Frankie in the plate, 12. Um, Savvy Knights, 25, 17, Soul Stopper, 12, Nuzray. Oh, he's an interesting one, the, he is. the, the Joseph O'Brien horse. Um, he's been beat at uh, 50 to 1 on. He's also been beat at 20 to 1 on in running, and he's been beat at twos on in running in three out of his last five starts. So he was only hands and heels when he won in the Curra. If, if, if it gets into a buckle with him, he could trade very short here, but he mightn't come home in front if he has to give him some of the cush. He broke a lot of multi hearts, didn't he, when he won at the Curra last time? Everyone was all on that over the rainbow to try and get the treble over the line. And you knew, including yours truly, and you knew a furlong out that this guy was just, like, what's this? I mean, I, you imagine they might have at one point in his career thought, OK, we'll go and be a nice hurdler with him, of course, being in these colours. But he does look like. He might have a decent flat campaign ahead of him. He's in stall five. I like that with Mikey mm. Sheehy on. Uh, look, there's some really interesting horses in here. Inverness, who Robbie mentioned, of course, beat uh, Solcombe last time. So why is there such a disparity in the market? In fact, if you watch back that Inverness run, you've got time as they're still a little while off going in the stalls here. He, he found some trouble in running, didn't he, Inverness? 
He did, yeah. That, that was part of why I liked him. Um, it's good wood. He's got a really nice profile for this. So I'm interested. To see, he's a son of Harlan Real. Harlan Real's oh, not really taken off as a stallion. One of my favourite horses. Yeah, I loved. I loved him. Uh, as a, he was so tough, wasn't he? Well, I was there when he won the King George, and it was just. It was so good to get his, his day in the sun. You mentioned SDS off to Hong Kong. He goes. He's sticking around for a couple of things this week, isn't he? Floats as we thought it was, but ten prize again, big price here. Yeah, definitely for the Johnstons. You know. Deb a proven stayer. Uh, I suppose you've got to argue with the third last time out. Got to build on that on that handicap debut, but maybe at a price. I think another one on its uh, handicap debut is Americk for the Varians. I know for Shaker Babe as well. See how that gets on. So yeah. interesting race. Some unexposed. Some horses we know a bit more about, but a decent Melrose. I think. Where's Andrea Razzini today? Is he? Is he? He was gone? running Fontaine at Sandown. He went he? to Sandown instead of coming here for two rides. Mm. Hmm. <clears throat> well, valuable race, I suppose. We've got the Solario Stakes coming up. Cannot wait for that. Six runners due to go to post. Some very, very interesting two-year-olds coming up at 2.40. That's 15 minutes away. Say hello wherever you are. There's a poll out there on YouTube. You're probably seeing it. Come on, let's get some more boats. Uh, some more boats? <laughs> He's not that bad. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Doing it at the Melrose. Is it the Champion <coughs> Stakes or the Ark, basically, is your, is your opinion poll out there. And away we go in the 2022 Melrose. Bad you're again. ready for it, Danny Archer. Let's get the call. Sulkham, a very bad start once again. KS Chorister very prominent early on along with the likes of Sheer Rocks, Temporize also up there and Wild Crusade. Wild Crusade not bad, settled just in behind KS Chorister. I was going to try and make this a sift test but Solcombe already I'd be a <laughs> bit worried. Yeah Barry what's it saying in the market then? Uh, the market's not worried. The market um, is shortening of anything. 3.95 now Solcombe. We're just a little bit slowly away. It's tagged onto the back of them. Um, yeah. Wild Crusade seems a big thing. He's 5.6. Al Nafir 8.2. 12 Nuzra. What's Savvy Knight doing, Ryan? I'm looking at it strange. He's the one that's spun out. All I would say to you, and, and this is, uh, as you noticed when you went head to head to me and, and came out worse, in the, I know you're learning quite a bit. Just. But the exchange market's never wrong. <laughs> I've just got to learn that. I'm like, it must be massive. And Barry comes back to me and says, nope, they're not panicking. And usually they tend to be right. If, if you were on the fav now, though, you're thinking, oh my well, lord, yeah. this is going to be some watch, Rob, isn't well, it? Yours going nicely, Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, on the rail. yeah nice enough, yeah. Which one's that um, again? Remind oh, Inverness. Inverness in the very light, sort of pink. Kieran Schumark from Stall One getting a ground saving ride then. Dan, where's my Nuzrut? Uh, he's towards the back as well. This is a, you know, I'm interested to see. Oh, Pat's had a long look round. Patsy Cosgrave. Interesting on the, uh, on, Case on the sectionals. Mm. Yeah, this is a very progressive horse, Cass Carista. Well, she just one of 59, win, 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 win. 59 53, sorry, wasn't it? 50, 53. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. I think it's all stopper right. just ahead she of... Sheerox uh, is catching my eye a little bit, guys. Frankie's got a... Got a bit of a swinger at the moment. Where's Soul Stopper, Daniel? Soul Stopper on the rail, just ahead of Savvy Knight with Nuzrit next to it. He looks a grinder to me, Soul Stopper, last time. He's the he's this definite stayer in the pack, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, Juvent, the only one really being pushed along. I think. Well, Crusade's got a lovely pitch for Barry as well. Go Turning further in. in front, the one in front, isn't he? We're not. Go on, this go is on, what the she did. This is what she did at Epsom when she won at 12s on. But we're talking <laughs> about races that were. I mean, look, she's taking them all out They're of the panicking zone. a little bit, some of them. What price Soul come now, Barry? Salcom 4.2. Despite the fact he's got 15 lengths 3. to make 3. up. 3.3 now, Salcom. Wow. All right, Case Chorister. Is she going to fall in the hole, Danny? Nuzrit's moving right. Come on, Nuzrit. Salcom is the one, I suppose, Holly Dodd is going on. the five. I Nuzrit's can see why it's gone. Look at how short it's gone now, the five. Amerik's running a screen. Oh, Nuzrit. Come on, Nuzrit no, as well. no, Nuzrit's going to get done, I think, Rob. Nah, By come on. Oh, I think, what's she doing, Ollie? She's looking for a run. Here comes Salcom. This thing's absolutely, look at this. This is Hamish. She's gone basically from left to right. She's cut across the back for She's a She's used most of the names to get She's there. She's absolutely hosed up this. I think this was the... Solcom. I think this was the going expert. Case Chorister has run a post. screamer. Still staying on... Case Chorister's got them all out of the comfort zone. Down, this is different oh, level, though. Oh, my word. Oh, haggis, you filthy, filthy animal. You've absolutely got this in the right <laughs> race, haven't you? And it's absolutely hosed up. We are in talking Vanessa about a couple here. Then. We'll go to Barry in a sec. They've eased down. No, now, cool. Danny, I said to you, didn't I, halfway through the run, they're never wrong, these exchange no, I mean, partners. that's obscene performance. If ever we needed an advert of that, Barry or Sulkham, was it? Yeah, Russian. Danny was a layer as soon as they left the stall. <laughs> yeah, I was, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> what a mug. <laughs> Don't let him wind you up, Danny. <laughs> the exchange players knew. They knew. Um, yeah, she made a bit of traffic problems as well. She gave a good nudge to Wild Crusade. Get out of the way there. Let me through. And he's absolutely hosed in. The second has run an absolute sledger. You'd have to say, go now, trying to make all hit a low of 4.2. Cassius Coyster. Um, outside of that, nothing really traded low, Dave. Your winner had a bet for SP of 4.2. Clear favour uh, for Solcombe.
If I mean, we'll get you the quotes of this, Barry, straight afterwards from what Holly says and William as well and the team. But that was that's th disgusting. That really. was filthy. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, that good reform looks very good now, doesn't it? Well, he just did it. He missed the break. In Vanessa's he, was, almost he was lit up. And third there. He beat yeah. a horse that I put up at Ascot a couple of runs ago. Can you, maybe, can you find that form line please, for me? Please, yeah. Because please. I was a bit disappointed with the horse that got beaten, if you please. And uh, now I think I've got a very well handicapped Messi horse, whoever that was. Right, you're yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's the, the unpronounceable one. Timesius. Timesius Fox. But look at this. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. You've got basically yeah, Quickthorn up front. Who's gone 20 lengths clear in, in, in case Chorister? No, strong travelling horses like Nosra are off the bridle, two furlongs out. Inverness is his old rival trying, but she's absolutely gone. I'll tell you what, <coughs> I'll go past eight horses to get to the middle, and I'm still going to win on the bridle. Yeah, that was really impressive. I mean, what, she's won out of 80, he's won out of 83. Um, what are you thinking? That's going to go up about £12, maybe. That. And it's massive. Not that isn't far it? off group company. Can you look at his breeding for me, please, Rob, as well? I'd love to, yeah. Frank, oh, yeah, out of ribbons. Oh, Remember ribbons, oh, ribbons. James Fanshaw. So, basically, what has he been doing in his career so far? Yeah, I mean, that's the best pedigree in the field, surely, isn't it? Well, it's, it's absolutely... Um, oh, although Gayaf's brother was running, so that's not bad. I don't know. Sulcombe, another fav, then, uh, of the Melrose goes in. It's a, it's a race, the Melrose, that people like to look at a long way in advance because it's the future. We love our stairs, horses that might we stick do around love our a little stairs, bit. yeah. I have to handicap this uh, at some point because Rodgers is on holiday. Are you so doing the RPRs for this? Yeah, I am. Yeah. What, what are thinking? you thinking? I don't know. Um, what mark was he on today? So he's on, on 83. Yeah, that's quite low, isn't it? My sort of gut feeling, without watching it back, is about 97, something like that. 97, about a stone higher. Right. What's the official distance there? A good, good five or six lengths. I mean, you. I mean, looking, this is always I mean, a good race. I, I'll be pressing for 100 actually because. You're going to want to keep a lot of these on side in the future. That, That's what I mean. That, that in itself says, is yeah. dirty. It's a great a race. A hundred. Uh, We're getting in the mind of the Racing uh, Post yeah, ratings here. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd need to have a chat with Rod as well. I'm, this is actually all my call this week because he's on holiday. Isn't that lovely? Maybe I'm getting carried away. I need to look at the time and things like that. He's back soon, isn't he, Rodders, by the way? Is he back on next week's uh, show? I think he is, actually. Ooh. He, he's back he in the country. Uh, I think he's on next week's show. We'll get a word of that for the guys to go. He's been in Canada for the last five weeks. We've got to move on from that. Superb demolition that was Sulcum. Uh, I've got a quote from Potapova coming through at Sandow. Where we return <coughs> next. Oh, look at the commander. Blimey. Wasn't quite by Eid, was it? But they, you just don't win on handicaps like that, do you? Barry, we've got to go now, though, uh, from the sublime <coughs> uh, to the uh, potential of the Colts on show in the Solario stakes. I remember Ravens pass winning this. Of course, Charlie Appleby's last horse to win this was Massa. He went on to win the Derby. Of course, they've got Silver not in here. But the market suggesting a quick double for the Haggis team. Yeah, Desert Hero is three to one hard on the exchange, which is two to one favor. Three point three five silver, not defense. Four is four point seven. Thirteen Dornick Castle, and it's sixteen bar. I like Desert Hero. Um, it's one that I've backed myself. He, he won very well in Haydock under Hands and Heels Ride on soft ground. Um, I thought they might have stepped him up for a mile, but just to keep him at the seven furlongs, he, he's he's from the family of Dartmouth, the Queen's horse. So ultimately, like a mile and beyond, you're going to see him the best effect. But I think there's going to be a bit of pace here with Dorna Castle, who likes to be up there, and Lady Bullet likes to be prominent as well. So he should set low. I think he'll improve for the better ground as well. Like I said, it was soft today, one in Haydock. We're going to have 25 quid win, please, uh, for the charity. Desert Hero on the exchange. And happy to be a price taker here as opposed to setting our own odds. Um, take the two to one about him. It on is, the exchange. Yeah, yes. sure. It's an interesting horse, this. We'll get to it after Rob puts on the trade for everyone out there. And uh, I must admit, I'm not going to go against him. A, a, a couple of horses in here that we have to like, don't we? Because they, you know, they cost a lot of money. We see some, uh, you know, some very good winners last time out. But um, I think he, he got up and beat horses that were inferior to him despite running very green. I don't think he really quite liked that sloppy surface at Haydock. And if you read Paul Keeley's scissors this morning, you would have heard Keel say, in no way was that soft ground. In fact, he wagered it wasn't even good to soft ground. It was just Haydock ground, as we're calling it now. Uh, so don't worry about him on the quicker ground today, says Kills. I sort of, Danny, wanted, because I thought he might be a short price here, I wanted to go against him. I didn't in the end, but I look back at Defence of Fort, who's, mm -hmm. who had, he's a massive, massive son of Spangled Banner, uh, this guy. Um, 
he basically ran and had the rail at Ascot when he won. He's huge, this for Peter Chappelheim. But Kaima has come out of that race, and of course we saw what he did at York. He was fourth, and they gelded him afterwards. He could be anything. Silver Knot represents Charlie Appleby, who, who won, you know, as he had to, I think. But behind that, he caught the eye behind Chaldean when he was very, very green. And you've got the likes of Wahaj in here as well. Which way did you go? I've ended up going with you. Silver Knot's interesting with that Chaldean form. And I also think Dawn at Castle, it just didn't work in the vintage. But I think it's too early to be giving up. But Desert Hero, as you said, also wasn't great away, I thought. It looked a bit messy. And then he was given a nice rod by Tom to come around the outside. The second's won since. 33-1 to 1 for the Derby. Her Majesty won it last year. Future lies over further, but hopefully he can take this en route to better things. Now, I don't think this trophy will be moving after this race, Rob, because you also... Yeah, Desert Hero. Um, but, I mean, it's, these, are, these are tough sort of races. I never really go into them with maximum confidence. I was quite interested in the Foxes before he came out. Yeah, I have a knack of coming on this show and then and like an author that that's a non-runner. Well, we're um, unison, I think, here, guys. Look at that. Sam Hart in the gallery has oh, put yeah, this up. Four. Look at this, four out of four, and you know what oh, happens. In that case. <laughs> you know, this is what you would call a Racing Post Live maximum selection, guys, out there in the 240. Now, Haggis hasn't won this race, uh, but look, don't worry about that. Uh, and I've got an interesting thought about this horse. Please. We were looking at Baid in the week. We have, how long have we got to do this? Not long, five minutes. We were looking at Baid in the week, take? and we were talking about why they might not want to go to the Ark for how he's been campaigned. Because he was unraced at two, yeah. right? Which, when you are looking for the stallion point of view and the commercial point yeah. of view, Haggis was tempted to train him for the Dewhurst. That's what we were told. And then we actually found a quote in one of our analysis. You can all find, if you look through Baid's races, didn't know you can look, he, he said, if I had trained him, rushed him for the Dewhurst, and he thinks he would have won the Dewhurst, yeah. then would he be the horse he is now, basically? So Haggis has got it in his... I've always had it in my mind that Haggis is looking for the Dewhurst I winner. Know, though. I think he's got a little did, bit of business did it with the Dewhurst. Frankel running loads at two? If you win this, you go to the Dewhurst, right? This is, I mean, yeah. this is the yeah. kind of race you should be... Uh, running in afterwards, reached for the moon, went to the uh, the Doncaster Champagne Stakes. Remember, we got turned yeah. over there. Um, two Darn sure. Hot, of course, won this. Massar won this. South Seas won this. He was a good horse. Kingman won this. Mm. And a horse called Fantastic Moon for Jeremy Nasida, going way back to 2012. Really good horses win this. What is the danger? Is I it Silver Knot? I, I just wanted to touch on uh, on that. What you're saying, I, I don't. Uh, would that really have affected how he... Well, apparently he had a slight hold-up. That's why we didn't see Bayed it too. But they, they, the, yeah. the decision was made not to try and get him into a novice and then go for the duo. That's how well they thought of him. That's what we were yeah, kind I of alluded to. to think run out. We was on race at two. This is what we're talking yeah. about, whether yeah, he goes no, to yeah, the arc or not. Yeah. And that poll is out there, guys, and I believe it's starting to sizzle. Do you go champion stakes with Bayed, which was suggested straight after by um, Hisser, of course, and... William Haggis and the team at Shabbo, Angus Gold, and all the Hills crew, etc. Or do you go to the Ark? And one of the things that people haven't said to William, I think, I saw that interview with Chappers on ITV afterwards, and he was sort of having a bit of a pop at Chappers. They'd done it on the racing debate on Sky as well, and it, there's been a little bit of jousting. But Chappers is only asking the questions that everyone wants to hear. But what we didn't say to him, William, the reason why we think you ought to go to the Ark is because you'll win. You know, you'll just win. What's against yeah, him would, in the Ark? Yeah. Stall 15 of 15? But it, it, I think it's good horses just find a way. He's oh. all right on the ground, isn't he, as well? Yeah, I think yeah, he'll yeah, be all right on the ground. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, a nod to Nat Green, <coughs> who was talking about Baid all through the summer when people were, like Hills and Rodders were trying to sort of like, you know, say, well, he's not Frankel yet. Or why are we doing these comparisons? Well, because he's unbeaten and he's on his way to, you know, doing what Frankel did pattern wise. But she said, I think because of this summer ground, they've not wanted to let him down fully yet. And I don't think it was just the trip. And I think Nat's absolutely nailed that. I remember speaking to William at the start of the season, and he said, I think he is best on, you know, away from rattling ground. And he's had rattling ground, but he's danced the dances. Yeah. I think we saw him on what was a kinder surface for him at York as well. I think he'll be fine on the ground. I've got a feeling he's even better with some cut. Mm. I just think good horses, They're just good horses can win over basically any trip. Like, like Real World, who yeah. he said, can he go on it? You know, no, like, Dirt, that's Ascot. The, like, well, by E would probably... Would win a July Cup, wouldn't he? That was the other thing that was we found in the comments as well about why he might not step up. He was suggesting, like Aidan O'Brien does, that this could win the July, you know, the July Cup. Yeah, but that's that's a commercial statement, isn't it? It, it is. makes speed now for breeders. 
So, like, mm. that's the whole thing about Bayid at this stage. When you're hearing that sort of tosh, oh, he could, he could win a July Cup. <laughs> Come on, we've heard a million times before from Aidan O'Brien <laughs> about their commercial prospects. You know, I, like, it's just, it's a little bit irritating because, like, racing, we do want to find out who the best horse is. And we all know it's Bayid. On official ratings, it's Bayid. But it'd be great just to see him do it over a mile and a half as well. I think it mm. becomes a more attractive proposition to breeders than a less attractive proposition by winning the arc. But I don't think uh, his handlers seem to share that view. No, stamina in this world is is not thought to be the dirty one, is word, it? Dirty word, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it, is, it has become like a dirty word. However, William is very, very sporting, and I think he sees that he could probably win the race. Yeah, and that's such a contradiction, because everyone talks about the arc as being the best race. But the stab, if you win it, you're going to National Hunt Mayors. What if you got beat, though? Well, Stradivarius that really is the case in point, his... isn't he? He's the, he, he, he's the other exception to the rule. He went on that massive <coughs> sequence, but he's winning staying races. But he has won over a mile four, and he's got yeah. a proper turn of foot. But the problem is with Stradivarius, one of the reasons why they're keeping him in training, he's tiny. Yeah. Right? So tiny. National Hunt Mayors aren't going to necessarily want to go to him, and he's not going to be throwing up Marlers, is he, and things like that. No. He's, he's Yates. Well, it's part of it that the Mayors aren't attracted to him. It's actually... The problem is you don't have, Wilders. <laughs> When you look uh, like one of the Bee Gees, you're going to be fine, aren't you? It. <laughs> is that actually a thing? Like, 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 <laughs> we had this Barry coming in, where he sort of strutted in, and I went, oh, you had a bit of Bee Gee about you there, Rob. And it turns out you do look a bit like Barry Gibb. Well, I'm Googling that now. You can, you can. What, what about, about theoretically, if he got beat in the arc? Doppelganger. Yeah, absolutely, he's a doppel. That's such absolutely. a terrible uh, shout, mate. <laughs> Go and Google it, I everyone. I prefer the there. Ryland shout when someone <laughs> the said that on there. A cross between Ryland and Barry Gibb. My it's Lord. Terrible you shout. need to put your hair back you more up for Ryland. Yeah, though, surely. Well, I wouldn't do that. That the hairline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're having some fun today on the show. It feels like a good show today. Is everyone enjoying it out there? The numbers are really, really good. The racing is as strong as it gets on a Saturday in August. Let's get some more socials up. All of us are going for Desert Hero. Who is Stephen Loftus going for? That was a very average maiden that Desert Hero won. The third, the second or third got turned over last night, didn't it? At Newcastle, I think, Stephen. Um, but I think, he, watch it back mm. again, Stephen. I think he won despite, he looked, I don't know, it would be interesting to see what he hit in that maiden on the exchange because he ran about two furlongs to the one. He must have been quite a big price. This is just, I just think... He had a high of eight in running. Did he? There you go. And we know that Haggis's horse is first time out. They're not going to be fully revved up. Some of his... Okay, you're going to now say Baid and all that sort of thing, but I don't know. He said, didn't he, William, in the week, the trick is now to find the next one. I'm not suggesting that this is it, but I think this will be going to the race he wants to win. Really, really wants to win. And that's the Dewhurst. If you're with Silver Knot, good luck. He looks an absolute picture going in, as they are. Uh, Danny, you going to call this one as well? Enjoyed that in the last race? I can if you need, yeah. Quite well, mate. It's a tough skill. I mean... Yeah, exactly. He really is on. I've, I've tried it a couple of times. Defensive yeah, forward. Does anyone like this? Graham Walbrace put this up, of course, from Canada. Uh, I'm yeah. more pleased that Chapel Hyam's got a, you know, hopefully an interesting Everyone horse says again. that when Peter's uh, got a good horse. Everyone says that. And he's in everything as well, this defensive forward. He's massive, by the way. I wondered whether, uh, if you look at the pedigree of a lot of these, they are stayers in the making. So, you know, definitely a mile plus for most of these, bar him. So if there's not much pace on, defensive thought might be the way to go. Let's go to Danny Archer then for the call. Dawn at Castle surely got to be prominent under Richard Kingscourt. Oh, look, Jesus does, has gone for silver not as well. Sorry, I should have said does, that. Does look to be Wahaj also prominent. In behind at the minute, Lady Bullet. And wide on the outside, Desert Hero. Tom just mm. looking to get across at the minute, but Dawn at Castle making most of the running. Also keen, Lady Bullet. And that is defensive four. He is a big lad, isn't he, on the outside? They're a good clip, aren't they? They are. They are. Waj, who's unbeaten for Patrick Owens, <coughs> put him in the bag big time. Of course, it's Kieran Fallon. Desert obviously. Hero's lit up badly. Yeah, but I, I don't know. That's all right. He's, right. He's running right behind he? the front two. He's lit up. He's I don't like that too much. He's lit up. Yeah. He has got a bit keen in Hang behind. On, Tom, Tom's, Tom's trying to hold him in. It's Kieran. Tom's um, up at... Uh, sorry, Kieran, yeah. At York, isn't but he? But Dawn at Castle, this is what could happen if he can get loose off the front and Silver try and attack. Silver Knot's gone back. Well, uh, Barry, we're three furlongs out. Six to four, three to one desert, and it's a 5.8 Wahaj. Oh, this could get a bit messy. Kieran's Kieran got to get out, hasn't he? Quickens, does he? Well, I don't know. I think Silver Knot is the danger, I think. But Quickens. he's got the gap now. Now, defensive thought. Watch him run around as he did this at Ascot. Look at Silver Knot. He's on the bridle here, this chap. Well, he's found Chelsea too good at his debut. Is he going to get the gap, Rob? He's there, yeah, well, he needs uh, that, that the mate. gap with the Godolphin. Oh, the Godolphin also. Also. I don't know. Godolphin. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he's gone one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, yeah, he's gone. I don't know. We, uh, impressive. You, this was quite impressive. I'll Off tell you what, goes. how good has Wards run? Absolute storm at Wards running mm. second. 
Just a, just a little bit slow. Fair play, Stephen Loftus out there. Uh, you called his limitations. He just looks like he wants a mile already, that horse. And, and Mickey Mouse race. Wow, just run a beauty there. Good He's horse. confirmed himself a smart one, hasn't Had he? But Silver Knot, Barry, uh, get, once again, they knew some way out. Yeah, Beffer SP at 3.49. Desert Hero went off favourite at a Beffer SP of 3.3. Wahaj traded at a low in running of 2.75. Your winner, Silver Knot, didn't really trade uh, at a, at, in running high uh, other than that of what he traded pre-race. He traded at a high of 4.15 pre-race. Didn't trade bigger than that in running in the race at all. So, yeah, he looks a nice horse, the winner. He travelled really well. He picked up nicely. Step up and trip already for Desert Hero. But that's what his, um, that's what his bloodline would uh, suggest. Yes, absolutely. Same for Silver Knot as well. Now, Massar was the last winner of this for Charlie Appleby. Are we looking yeah. at a Derby well, horse? It's interesting. Is um, He's out of God Given, who was very good for oh, Luca yeah. Kamani, who really did stay longer than, uh, than your mother-in-law, Dave. So I think a chance for... You know, we'll get a further trip out of Lope, uh, by Lope de Vega, but I'd give another chance to Desert Hero. I didn't like the fact he, he got a little, he got a bit fractious with defensive thought on that turn for home. That He's Newbury form be better. behind Chaldean when he made yeah, his right debut, he was expected now. to win that, and I, I was with Chaldean. I think I got like an, I thought an <coughs> each way thievery prize about him. But Haggis had the third in that called Lord Bertie, who hosed mm. up on bad ground at Foss last time. Last time he's a good horse. Seeking gold, of course, when Tom Clover has gone on to. Win his next start at Yarmouth, nice, and he looks like a good one. Goodness yeah. me. And silver not. I mean, so Chaldean, he, he's won the Aiken, but I wonder if this, the market was right that day, I think. Silver not was too green. You watched him at Kempton last time, he had to make his own running, but that's just a case of getting the job done, isn't it? Like Desert Order in the um, yeah. in the maiden there yesterday, uh, the very um, uh, 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 valuable one. Uh, but that we've seen. Video. That's it, Barry, of the Hu Yamal maiden um and the way that he traveled there they've ridden him supreme confidence mm. you give a chance to the third i think again because he was keen he was lit up you, you were right he, he, he was a bit keen and you give another chance to him but i think we've seen a very good horse i reckon sick i reckon he'll be in through 16s for a guineas probably something like that do you Between think we're going to get 20s. a quote buzzer for something uh 16 from 40 for the uh 2000 oh. guineas Danny Archer, just I tell you what, he's after your job, Barry. He's nailed that one as well. Uh, all right, good stuff. So 16s, who's, who's interested in that? Um, they've been getting. I mean, did you see the piece that we wrote about Charlie having a a, a two-year-old edge because he's had the the strip of ground that others haven't been able oh, to yeah, use? Oh yeah, that's quite interesting. It is quite interesting. Yeah, hmm. it is quite interesting. It didn't work for me, of course, with local dynasty or whatever it's called in the Aiken. Uh, that was one of my better bets of the week at York. But my next best bet of the week at York comes up in the three o'clock. And don't worry, if we're down after the unison bet, we're going to get it back in the next, don't worry. Uh, this is my best bet in this as well. Is it? So shall we? Shall we? Is it too early to share? Let's get the market up. You can see the exchange there. It is, of course, the, uh, the City of York stakes coming up at three o'clock. <clears> and there she is at the top of the market, sacred. Barry, it's part of the lucky 15. We always seem to put this one up. Around this time last year, she danced in, didn't she, at Newbury? It's not gone her way in two starts this season. You and me, I don't know about the other two. Phil, this is it. Yeah, the Hungerford last year is the race you're referring to in Newbury. Obviously, her first run this season was in the Platinum Jubilee, where she ran a very, very respectable race, all things considered. That was her drop back to six furlongs in a long time. And then in the Lennox, Race just never happened for her. She was drawn nine and nine, dropped her in. The race developed in front of her. She only got going laid on. I think this track is going to suit her considerably more than Goodwood. So I'd forgive her that run in Goodwood. And that's why I think she'd turn around that Lennox form with Sandrine. She's heading the market of 4.6, 5.9 Kinross. Sandrine 7.2 is very big indeed. 7.8 Rohan, plenty of good judges looking at that. Jumbi 7.8, 11.5, your pace angle in Pogo. And it's 14 bar. So there's going to be plenty of pace on here. Uh, I really like Sacred. Um, and we're going to have 25 quid win on her. We'll set our own odds here, please, on the Betfair Exchange, Robbie. I'm going to look the back at around 4.8. This should be a pretty lively betting heat. Um, and so that will go over into the pink box. And we want someone to come in and lay us that bet. But like I said, we can reassess that le uh, later on before post time at 3 o'clock. We have about 11 minutes um, before that happens. So looking to be a backer at 4.6 is Sacred. Oh, yes, me too. Absolutely, Barry. I just think that there were reasons to think that she was pretty unlucky last time in the Lennox, not to have gone a lot closer. Of course, some people thought that about Kinross as well. And when you throw in the likes of Sondrine and Jumby, who, of course, won the Hungerford States as he liked last time, Rohan, 
who loads of people like out there. We've got Pogo in there, and he's a bounce back, doesn't he? But uh, I think he might. Dr. Zempf comes over for Joe Lyons. He's not the worst oars in the world either. Art Power coming back as well. Can't want to see what he's going to do on his return. Will he be rusty? You've got 10 minutes to let us know what you think wins this. I'm with Barry on Sacred. Stall 8, Tom Marquand. This is why he's at York. Never mind, Garcy. This is the one. Do you want to start, Rob? I know you're very sweet. I think we're both oh, in yeah. agreement. No, after you, oh, please. 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 Brohan. Is this a two-way play on the, on the panel? Yes, we are, yeah. Yeah, yeah we are. Double-handed. After you, sir. Never met before, but now look at us already. 30 minutes in. <laughs> we're in agreement. BG's no. in the making. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. Enough <laughs> it's uh, the beard. Run of Screamer, I thought, in the Maurice de Geest. OK, it hasn't always been as effective. We've only run three or four times over seven. But I think this race could be set up for a closer like him. Yeah. And I'm happy with him at... And around eight, eights, I think, at the moment. On bet, well, sevens on Betfair. So, yeah, I just like the fact that it could just stack into his favour. First race. mention this afternoon of Highfield Princess. Mm. 58. I th thought... At Chelmsford. I thought that race <laughs> in France, the Maurice de Guise, was one of the was one of the messiest group ones I had seen. And you've seen a lot of group ones. I've yeah. seen a fair few group ones in my time, oh boy. <laughs> yes. uh, but I thought that was... Pretty messy, and I thought a lot of hold-up jockeys had to had to put their hands up. They got it badly wrong. You think Roham's flattered? I, they not, no, I wouldn't suggest that. I just think that she is just remarkable. Mm. She's a freak, isn't she? We've seen her on this show running at Chelmsford and the lights, and she's been getting beaten there. She's mm. a royal well, ascot. That, yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And yet, just when they get... There's a lesson to be learned here, I think, in that horses, they just can peak at certain times, and yeah. you know, especially with the weather well, that we've Billy's had. Billy's starting and, proven. It's an old saying, isn't it? Well, Philly's starting proving like there's no end of improvement with him. Robbie, I think you laid that horse and didn't back it. <laughs> you, said the red, you said go on the red section. You absolute buffoon. Is it's it? over. We were setting our own odds and it's pink, not red. He so was, what we'll do he was doing so that, well, Barry, he wasn't he? Pink. <laughs> he really was, yeah. That's okay, Rob. It's no big deal. The market's still in our favour, so we'll go over to the other side. They'll thank you later when it's beat, though. <laughs> yeah, say because <laughs> not going to win Rohan quid, is anyway. <laughs> Well, so, so you were you actually doing what you thought might happen, basically. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, Barry. This is, we, this we've is got to work this out. <laughs> so Go on, Barry. Sorry. 50 quid in there, Robbie. The 25 we were going to initially yeah. have on, we want to get out of the delay bet. So have 50 quid on sacred at 4.5. We'd have been steaming if the price had gone, man. So you got lucky there. But this, this reminds <laughs> this is exactly us, Barry, doesn't it? I thought it was going to happen, but this, Barry planted the seed. And you're not the first the person to do this. Ross Bridie did the first ever one, I think, uh, about, you know, a year or two ago, and it, and it ended up winning. And he was supposed to be a lay, and it, it ended up winning. I can't remember what it was, but we ended up getting, <laughs> the, just, we ended up getting the yeah. money anyway. So. Can I just say, in that Wild Crusade one, uh, that's exactly what I did, and so we actually made money. <laughs> did you? <laughs> well, we shouldn't have done. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. I'll tell you what, Rob, listen, you were doing so well on this show. <laughs> I mean, um, I've actually sorted this it This was out. definitely your performance of a lifetime. I was, gonna, I was just about to say to everyone after the show, it, it, what, the, the anti postman's had a stormer. It's the it Alpinista a... vibe. That's what it is. <laughs> You're getting the I'm one 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 about it. Anyway, look, all right, the trade's on. It's a, it's a head-to-head here. Myself and Barry, no, I'd rather be with. And it's a Wilders <laughs> and an Archer. Yeah, so, Rohan. Rohan. Yeah, so, OK, let's hear the horse, Rohan case. This horse is uh, all his best form is on six furlongs at stiff tracks or the, in the Marista Key, six and a half furlongs. I've, I think he's been looking for that seven for a while. He's not had that since way before he started improving. So he has run over seven, but that was a long time. But to be fair, he did run over seven in Saudi Arabia, but it didn't quite go to pan. I can forgive any also bad run in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. But uh, just the way he shapes, such a strong finisher, I think this can be run to suit. And uh, I think we'll, you look at a group one horse here, I don't know if there are too many others in the field and uh, he's full favourite, so plenty to like. I mean, I don't see it. I, don't, don't get me wrong, Rohan can do things that I haven't seen yeah, him do. could do this coming in, mate. I remember last, you could? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. all right, fair enough. Well, this is one of your better plays of the week, yeah, you say. Yeah, it's better the day, yeah. Paul Keeley's nap of the week goes in this, for those of you looking at the Sizzlers today. How's he getting on? I'm not oh, Kim Ross. sure. Kinross. Yeah, he's right, worried about lack of rain, though, he was saying yesterday. Ah, I tried to say that at the start of the week. He, 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 yes. he, he had a, a told-me-so moment in the week. I, I put up a nap at the start of the week. I said, sacred next best. I think local dynasty will win the Aikam, though. Mm. Messi raced the Aikam, but it was, a, it was a silly tip. But he went, I told you so, and I went, oh. oh. Ooh, other bit, professionals should not do that to each other. Yeah, a bit rude. I think I sent back, I hate York, or something like that, <laughs> for a bit of a joke. But I tried to tell him that Kim Ross won't have his ground. I think he's best on soft ground. 
Yeah, the record suggests it. His actual best RPR was on uh, just good ground. If but. you don't rate Sacred and you don't rate Sondrine and you think, well, Jumbies, you know, just come up from handicap, it's a quick turnabout. Rohan, not sure about it. You can see where the just Kinross each way bet comes from, right? Yeah, the biggest class. The, the biggest question mark is Al Sahel. I mean, if he puts it together, but he's you just can't trust him. He was he's been impressive over the trip before, but he was you know so poor in Maidan it was too bad well, to be true. It's one of these horrible coming back from Maidans. We just don't know, <clears> do we? Unless you're associated yeah. with him or been watching him, you know you've got no idea. I'd but like to see some back. stats how happy also get on after they've run in Maidan first time back. Uh, also, mm. I think Art Power is obviously uh, one we should talk about. He's interesting, because, isn't he? You know this horse is placed in four or five Group Ones, yeah. six furlongs. Yeah, I like him. I mean, Let's get some it, socials I mean, up there. He's nice. It's the first run back though again. Barry and myself, I'm trying to bat the young young guns away. Uh, Pogo to bounce back. I did say that, Racing Demon. Thank you very much. You must be hopping mad not to have seen that one. Uh, Andy Sim says, I've had a little bet each way on Art Power. So you're, he's, he's interesting, isn't he, Andy? It's just this tough race against some hardened performers that you feel might be sitting on a, a peak run of the season. And uh, Benny Whitcamp, great name, Benny, says, Elsa Hale, thinking that... Uh, have you just covered yourself a little bit? No, I, I understand it. I can understand why people think he could, but I'm the same. You know, oh, that Maidan point was so poor. I've just got to, because Rebels Romance was one, wasn't it? It ran really poor in Maidan, but then won twice. Mm. So it's a tricky one to gauge back on domestic shores, but a watching brief for some of those, like Art Power and Arsa Hale. Mm, a watching brief indeed. Loads of people watching out there this afternoon, enjoying the show. Myself, Dave Olson, Danny Archer, Robbie Wilders, and a big hitter himself from Dublin, uh, Barry Orr. Are we going to get you over again soon, Bazza, at any time? Yeah, I have no media plans, Dave. We'll, we'll get a look at the diary for the next couple of months and, and put something together all right, but nothing that springs to mind. Probably depends who's on the panel, I guess, I would imagine. No, um. not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Come on, we've all got our favourites, Barry. It's fine. Well, listen, you look... Uh, I do like G-Rod, I must admit. Yeah, he's a good lad. I, I like everyone in there, actually. They all bring their own various different talents to the table, so uh, that wouldn't be a consideration at all okay. who's on the panel. Yes, I was having a bit of a joke, Barry. You took that quite, you know, you tried God, to I wouldn't like to right. offend anyone, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that wouldn't be. No, 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 absolutely quite right. Absolutely not. You, listen, if, if, if anyone wants to know my favourites, you can, you can message in, of course. The poll, I'd I'm being to. told, is closed. It's a two-way play here. What do we think was going to be the... Look at that. A hundred votes came in. Uh, Baid, Ark or Champion Stakes? Barry, they're with you, unsurprisingly. 63% say it must be Longchamp. That's good to hear. Wisdom of the crowd, Dave. Do you think he's going to go? No. No. What do we actually think? The people have chosen entertainment. I'd agree with that, but I don't think he will as well. I put my vote in. I don't know, was I allowed to vote? I did vote in that, and I vote for the ARC. It's not like we're inside traders or anything like that. Of course, we're allowed to vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I was just trying to peruse the comments. The amount of people that stick, keep coming up to me that don't know a great deal about racing. Are you allowed to bet? I'm unfortunately yeah, I, I get am. that all the time. <laughs> I, I'm actually advised to bet. So, well, I mean, we are, aren't we? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. it's a all betting right. show. But, uh, uh, yeah, Ark, for me. Mm. Ark, all the way. I Look, think you win it. Because we think, think you'll win. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. And if it's going to be your last race, I mean, even Galileo went to the Breeders' Cup. Not many people talk about that, and that was a horror show. Bit, you know, talking about one of the great size, yeah. great size of all time. Would it matter to you if he got beat? No, I think that's no. Uh, it does to them though. I think, and I think. But the it does to them thing, because then you're ending a, a sequence of one, one, ones. Yeah, and and, uh, and no matter what they undefeated. say, Barry, they've retired to stood undefeated. Yeah, no matter what they say, Dave, it means a lot yeah. to them. And the Frankel thing, it finally came out of Williams' vocabulary this week. He said, like, it was the, and it was the biggest winning margin since Frank. And whatever you think of Mishriff, that was near the Mishriff at peak. We gave him 128 when he won the race last year, yeah. beating Alan Kerr, yeah, also Mishriff Frank. 125. So Busker is the one that the analysis department were, I mean, he's the thread from the analysis department trying to, it was a, there were still two tribes afterwards. Yeah, well, you, know, you we think gave like him Dubai on those placed in the champion stakes. What race yeah. of post racing did we give Baid? 138. 138. Oh, yeah. sound, say it again. Eight. Off 138. Oh, just say. What did 138? What did oh. Frankel get after his? 143. Yeah, I mean, that's just off. See the, the stars? Uh, 139. So, yeah, Ooh. so they, they're, they're the joint highest, best, second best horses oh, yeah. to run. See the stars did lose a race as well. Yeah, that's. So fair. Well, it's, of course, I think 138 is perfectly fair for that. Yeah, I thought he was always going to improve. Do you think Sabuska is a one twenty horse then? Uh, one one eighteen more. Because well, it He's does a make a difference, teams, isn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. 
don't want to alarm we you. Can, but when we're handicapping, we can also give pluses as well. You actually do these RPLs, so you should be yeah, telling Yeah, exactly. As I can tell you, we give pluses. Barry, let's come to you. Uh, we've been talking about the great bodies. We're going to keep doing. We've got a bit of time after this, of course. We're going to pop to the current, but we've got loads of time to build up the e -ball. This is an interesting market now, Barry. Uh, she looks a bit weak to me. Uh, there's a queue for Sandrine I can see as well. Sandrine is 6.4. Yeah, there's some support from that. It was 8.2 a little while ago, 6.8 10 Ross. But she's still steady, Dave. She's 7 to 2. She hasn't... Um, Hasn't deviated much off that. She's 4.5, 4.4 now, actually. She's gone below 72. Rohan, 9.4, 9.6 now. He's a little bit of a negative. Jumbi, 9.2, has been steady at that. Pogo, 11.5, and it's 15 bar. Arc Power is one that's come in for a little bit of support with Dave Allen in the plate. That's been matched at a high of 30 around that mark. Um, for small enough money now, but... Yeah, uh, 28 for 36 quid around that and it's into 9.4 now continues to gather support art power off the back of a long break oh that's interesting isn't it mm, he has got he's, again oh, it's, a, it's a longer trip negative. isn't it but as a five year old he might need it the ECBs are going alright okay they're in good luck if you're on art power I guess you're thinking that some might be over the top a bit let's find out away they break art power's Whoa. absolutely flown the grey Dr, Dr. Zemp walked out Joe Lyons is <laughs> Duck eggs. I'll tell you what, Pogo doing what he does best, absolutely flying out. Now, well, I'm in a, no, no excuses here, Barry. Yeah, sacred tracking him. There's going to be no excuses here at all, Dave. Yeah, she's tracking the right horse as well. She's tracking the pace. This is magnificent if you are on sacred so far. Jumbie's taking a keen hold out the back. Rohan for the boys on the panel is there as well. Uh, Al Sahail has settled quite well despite the hood. Pogo been taken on, would you believe it, by Art Power. Kinross is right there as well, guys. Danny? Mm, Rohan's got some running to do. Hopefully, he needs a gap. But yeah, Sacred is travelling sweetly. Kim Ross, Al Sahel seems to have settled okay. Art Power's going relentless. Dave. This is ridiculous. He's not going to get home. Art Power won't get home, will he? Surely yeah, not. This is non thought speed. Race. This is a strange old. What race, price right? are we going, Barry? We've got to be start going low now. She's the last off the bridle. Kim oh, no, Ross is with but her. But Sandrin is the one they want now. Sandrin's is closing. We need the gap between horses. You get the feeling. Frankie's looking confident. Oh, Kills will be screaming Kim at the Ross. telly wherever he is. Ah, oh, come on, Sacred. You can fill your lungs. I tell you what, Art Power's running an absolute belter here. He's not giving up whatsoever. Pogo, there the pace is holding up. Kim Ross, don't you dare. I tell you what, Sacred's blown out. She hasn't quite got home here. Kim Ross is going to do it. Kills is going to be inside. His nap of the week, given to you earlier, has gone in on the stand side. Frankie Dettori rowing away, nice and ready. What a race Pogo's when he's bounced back. Sandrine just hit the flat spot. She's back. She's in third. And Art Power, surely the horse to take from the race. Barry, we're deflated. Yeah, very much so, Dave. Yeah, it's a very, very disappointing performance from her. Everything went her way. No excuses there. Back to the drawing boards with her. Ken Russell with Frankie. Bet for SP of 7.2. Uh, Art Power traded at a low, only a low of 4.5 in running. Uh, Pogo traded at a low of 2.16 in running, so just nearly 11 to 10. Sandrin hit a low of 3.25 in running. But, uh, yeah, the winner's done it nice and very comfortably, you'd have to say, to finish up the stands rep. Yeah, fair play if you weighed in with the sizzler himself, then he was confident. And uh, despite the fact we didn't have what we thought was his optimal surface, the race was beautifully run to suit, wasn't it? And he will actually watch it back. He's smooth all the way. Yeah, he's picked up really nice. And he does deserve one of those. He's been running well in defeat this year. Frankie kept it pretty simple on the rail this side. But but I think the, the eye catcher's got to be up power if he avoids the dreaded bounce going forward. I mean, that was a, you know astonishing run, really. As Barry was saying, would he get home? I mean, he, he stayed on quite well to... I think he was second in the end. He's Sacred, one, flat. One. Rohan, flat. Jumbi, <sighs> flat. She is a bit flat. And you can. I wonder whether they... It's difficult. I've seen a couple of people on the chat quite rightly saying, give up, Devo and the lot. This is it. She's caught between six and seven, guys, is she? And does she really want a bit more holding on Her to... Her action doesn't look great there, actually, at the end as well. I don't know if... Mm, she's run happened. up very short, hasn't she, there? Probably probably not on her A game there today. That'll disappoint them slightly. Uh, when you've got to like go off like that, Rob, you want to sort of sit third or fourth, don't you? So there's no excuses yeah. there for Kinross did. Impressive that performance, 4A. Pretty good performance, yeah. Be better on a, with a bit of cut on the ground, 4A. Yeah, be one of the one of the horses to beat there, for sure. He, yeah, I, yeah. I think after... Let's see where he... Uh, of course, he was just beaten by Pogo, wasn't he, at the start of the year? That was in the uh, Messi race that we saw the John of Gaunt, of course, last weekend. Then he went to Ascot. He wasn't disgraced at all, actually. I just don't think he's an Ascot sprinter, really. They ran him on the final race last year, didn't they? They went to France. What did they go? They went to Derville, didn't they, earlier in the start of the year? didn't do that. I'm just looking at what they've done. He went, of course he went to the foray. He had his ground, so maybe they don't go there. He had a bad draw in the foray, and he's got going too late. 
Could be the foray. Don't think they're going to go Champions Day. He's in the he's in the Sprint Cup. Twenty to one. Better Sprint Cup. Twenty. Yeah. Is that going to be your next journey over Barry? I imagine it is. Yeah, I'm booked to go to that and then then to Ditchy for um, Paul Nichols' owners' day in the Sunday. Is that I when you're telling you that? Yes, I know. Is that when you're going to take me down there? Yeah, you're more than welcome to join us for that. It's a great day. You've heard that live out there, people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I he's mean, in the park. It's what? Seven furlongs, Kim Ross. He's in the park stakes. Oh, so okay. At the, at the uh, Sonny, yeah. meeting. Mm. Does he want? Yeah, I think Beckett likes that meeting, doesn't he? Uh, anyway, look, <clears throat> wh 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 whatever you've seen, Art Power, a busting eye catcher there. The problem is, you've got, Rob, is that when they run so well first time out after an absence, you're always worried about that yeah, second one. Boing. Run, boing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you're basically pogo. No, some run, but they definitely stay seven furlongs, I think. All right, okay. What are we run. doing next? Uh, we've got to be quick because we're going down for the uh, Futurity Stakes. Now, this is a bit of a curveball, this. We decided this would be the best race for you. I'm proud and regal, Barry. Uh, this is a very interesting race, isn't it? This has been won seven times in the last decade by the O'Brien Stable, of course. He's got Hans Anderson here. I'm surprised that Ryan's not riding this. He's riding on the once raced, once won Aesop's Fable. They don't tend to win this race on paper. And proud and regal, whose form's stacking up beautifully. But yet, uh, he's, he's, not, he's a bit bigger than I thought he would be. Yeah, Tyrus winner, proud uh, and regal, and did it well from the front. He got everything his own way, though, in Leopardstown. He's 2.48. Aesop's Fable, whose form of the race he won is was in the Mount with Hill of Beans. It's one of the worst <laughs> maidens, I'd say, you'll see in the career this year. 4.0. Hans Anderson, who beat a nice horse that subsequently went in for Joseph O'Brien called Al Reef. I put that one in the notebook. They think an awful lot of that down, and down below. And it's 22 bar. I did want to lay Aesop Fable, but it was a two to one chance when I was looking to lay it earlier. Um, out to three to one now. So just going to back off this race, Dave, to be perfectly honest with you. It was a bit of a leg curveball. If, if Aesop's Fable shortens up, um, yeah, I'd look to lay it, but not just yet. All right, OK. So listen, we can do this, of course. Safe gambling out there as well. MO at the race post and at Betfair as well. And you can stay out. And Barry does this. He puts up a lay at the start of the day. We see his selections. If it goes out to a silly price, very good horse potential. He's got Ryan Moore on it. Why is he not riding Hans Anderson? Could the clue be there? I don't be, know. I think, yeah. I'm I mean... sub uh, look, on paper, Rob, it, it, uh, Aesop's favour is the wrong horse. And then Ryan yeah. jumps on it and you're thinking, hang on. They're inside my mind. I don't know about this pedigree, though, for seven furlongs. No, no, never out of a five furlong sprint. Well... I Not saw a horse sure. won at Carlisle yesterday for Mark Johnson. Was it called Loyal Touch? I think Barry put it up at, 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 at Glorious Goodwood. It's a beast of a horse, and it just looks like a stayer. Yeah. They're big horses for two-year-olds, I think, and they do outstay their pedigree slightly. That is true. Yeah, no, you know, no, never had well, the time stamp uh, last night as well. He was massive, wasn't he? I, yeah. No, no, no never. I, I would rather Hans Anderson, for sure, as yeah. a son of Frankel. Uh, that maiden form looks pretty good. Almost won on his debut. They don't always want their their Colts and Phillies to win on their debuts, do they? So they can improve. They do and tend they to keep that. improving. So they don't like to chuck them straight into a group race after after their debut quite a lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I thought he was he was too big. I mean, he would be favourite, I'm sure, if uh, Ryan Moore was riding. So. Well, yeah, absolutely. And actually, it looks like the market is now coming for him, Barry. Does it, Hans Anderson? Yeah, Hans Anderson. Yeah, it looks like he's the right one of the uh, O'Brien now into eleven to four. Asos Fable eight to four to one now. So. Uh, your favourite's still strong, though, Proud and Regal at 2.38. Uh, you'd have to think that the cool more partners have a very strong hand in this race. Yes. It's 22 <laughs> barred at three of them yeah. ahead of the market. Well, they, as I said, they've won seven of the last um, ten. They have had 22 runners in that time, just the three places as well. And, of course, Donica has Proud and Regal who won the titles, which used to be the sort of sexy, net, you know, the very, very top two-year-olds. Uh, back in the day when I was getting into racing used to win that for O'Brien uh, Churchill's won this in the past 10 years Guineas, Derby uh, Anthony Van Dyke, Walker Monk, Glen Eagles Point Lonsdale didn't quite go on the Armoury, proper horse as well Who are you, who's going to be the proper horse for you then? Hans Anderson for Rob Yeah. I was going to I was going to lay Ace at table as well so I'd, I'd probably go Hans Anderson as well although the Proud and Regal form's taken a boost because the second Helsing has won a, a listed event next time out as well so yeah he, uh, look the average winning racing post rating that we give horses from this race is around about 115 so who's the horse that's going to jump up for that 
for me it's point it, it, it's proud and regal mm -hmm. um, drawing seven so he's sort of on the outside Gavin Ryan's going to want to get in, but I was, I was pretty impressed with him last time, so he will do for me. But we could see a future star here. There's the market there. Fingers on the buzzers, I guess. Barry's not playing in this race, but will you give us the quote straight afterwards for whatever comes out on top? I guess we're going to be talking about maybe Be Beresford, Vertem for Churity after this for this race, Barry, is it? Maybe even the Dewhurst. Yeah, Dewhurst. Dewhurst, potentially, yeah. Yeah, like we wouldn't have any of those, the, the Beresford or the... Uh, futurity up on site yet but um, yeah this is when the two year olds start sort, sorting themselves out now these next couple of weeks mm, okay yeah ab absolutely this is but like obviously Little Big Bear is the is the standout one in Ireland at the moment that the known they never called so. we're going to find out He's... about him tomorrow in the pre-morning of course because well that form's put to the test by Persian force you know? It looks like he might not be seen as a three-year-old, that chap, because they're getting every inch of juice out of him, aren't they? Yeah. yeah but he's right. a no-name never, so like uh, Robbie says, you know, stepping up and trick could be an issue for him. Yeah, OK. And he's a, like we saw with Memas, the Hannahs don't mind retiring them. Right, we are off and running then. Uh, what's this going to the front? This is Joseph's horse, is it? Yeah, this is Lakota, Lakota 7. Lakota 7. Up yeah. there at the moment. Unsurprisingly, the evergreen Kevin Manning uh, up there on one of Jim Bulge's in those very famous Young Bulge Colours. Uh, young, Ireland. young Ireland. Where are we going there now? Proud and Regal's finding his way to the front here. Looking for Aesop's Fable. God, he's a good looking horse, isn't he? Uh, Hans Anderson wants a share of it as well. Uh, the outsider, uh, Semblance of Order, looks on from rear. Uh, guys, anything catching the eye early, Robbie? Uh, I like the way Hans is going at this stage. Um, I like the way Aesop's Fable's going. They've, they've, yeah, he has settled well under Ryan Moore. Proud and Regal just so, about going ahead now. So, so interesting to see how this works out. Yeah, muddling sort of pace. All right, here we go then. We're attacking. What's the market saying? Let's have a little look down. Aesop's Fable. Yeah, I'm not surprised he's gone short. He's Aesop's really Fable has shortened up, hasn't he? Yeah, Hans Anderson may be just going to start feeling the pace here. Now, the favourite's got the rail here. We'll find out what Aesop's Fable is made oh, of. Yeah, no Apache Outlaw has got some pretty good no form pass. as well. No, this is the first one. you go, Hans. Hans Anderson then. Could this be the tail? It looks like the way. It's switching a little bit. On he goes. Proud of Weaver's one up short. Yep. Aesop's yep. Fable's yep. coming. Here, are oh, we going to find a no. coming? Oh. Barry thinks so. Here comes the Fable's over the top. We were going to lay it. Oh, my Lord. Ryan Moore gets it right. That is an impressive performance. The market couldn't have him. It's a one-two for Aiden. Proud and Regal hit a flat spot, came on. Looks to be screaming for a mile, that horse. I think that will be hot form going forward. Barry Orr. Winner Aesop's Fables finished up with a Beffer SP of 5.3, so nearly 9 to 2, considering he had been matched at a low uh, pre race of around the 2 to 1 mark. It was a massive, massive negative for him in the market. Proud and Regal, your favourite that went off at 2.22, which is 5 to 4, hit a low of even money. We also saw Hans Anderson trade at a low of 1.12, the stable mate of your winner, Aesop's Fable, traded at a low of 1 to 8 in running for 327 quid. Uh, yeah, pretty lively betting race and the market got it wrong. I tell you what, and what a t what an absolute brilliant advert for staying out when the price gets too big, Barry. And I want to stay with you because uh, there was a lot of jumping up and down in our gallery here, I could see. The guys are, and uh, there's a lot of this going on because they liked Aesop's Fable coming in. And when you sent in your selection early on, I'm laying Aesop's Fable, there was a bit of... <sighs> There's a bit of that going on, and he went out. Now, Ryan Moore, Barry, has had three rides so far, and this is why they're getting excited yeah, in the gallery. Winners. And he's got two yeah. more to come. The five-fold is on, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, for sure. For sure. The winner gets a quote of 7-1 to one from 20-1 to one for the um, Middle Park. Okay. Middle Park, that's interesting. He showed a lot of speed there, Aesop's Fables. Didn't have the, didn't have the uh, form on the paper, Rob, but it just shows you, doesn't it? And you've just got An to... If you just, 8 from 25 for the Dewhurst. That that probably is a bit more likely for me. He definitely showed a turn of foot there, picking the bones out of that. Hans Anders has run a very good yeah, race. Yeah, he has. And we've had another one beating at 8 to 1 on him running. Is that it's what he nice, touched? Yeah. Did, yeah. He, did he go one that long? Yeah, yeah, 1.12. I'm a bit surprised about that, Dan. We called him turning in, didn't we? He looked, they were getting on with it a bit. There was no confirmed front runner, really. Has that been the problem, really? They've taken each other on prior to you know, maybe. Look, if you've got two that are going for it and you're sitting just behind, if you've got a turn of foot mm. and you can deploy it in the final furlong, you should really come out on top. Uh, he's in everything, um, basically. You know, but might be surprised to no. know. Right, of course, he's got Meditate in the next. Ryan there, that's 3.45, just after we go off air. That's a debutante stakes. So you can see a proper one in that. The Albany winner, she didn't make it to York this week. They've gone for that. And then he's got So Beautiful in the Maiden at 4.20. This is on, isn't it? 
Barry, yes, this is us. Yeah, it could be. It wouldn't be anything unusual for, for them to be dominant like that in a sort of card such as this in the current. That, that, nothing on this is magnificent. Wouldn't be unusual. I love this. Thank God we went over to the car because we think we've seen some special form there for you. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Uh, still more races to come, of course, all over the park. One more here for you on Racing Post Live, and it is the very valuable Ebor Handicap. Lots has been said about this. We've even given it our front page, nevertheless. Solving the puzzle. We're going to give you, and we want to hear from your top threes, but let's get the trade out the way, Barry, on this. You're going for the interestingly named, interestingly trained Alfred Boucher, who we've just seen earlier in the week. Yeah, and I do like that angle of a horse turning out again at a festival like this off the back of a break. We saw the great effect at the recent um, uh, Galway Festival, and you see it many, many times at festivals in Ireland. It's not as uh, UK racing fans wouldn't be so familiar with a horse turning around so quickly, but this guy was mightily impressive over two miles here the other day. He's the next Henry Candy horse. Uh, he beat Frank and Stella on, on Thursday over the two miles, like I said. He tried to give Sophie Stevens seven pounds in Chester on, on his debut for the yard. He, um, and that that turned out to be quite a task uh, subsequently. Uh, he was very impressive a couple of days ago under that hands and heels ride. He's currently trading at 12.0 on the exchange. On the sports book where there's seven places, though, is where we're going to look to back and please. Each way punter's getting seven places on the Betfair Sportsbook here. So if you toggle over to the Sportsbook, please, um, 335, we're going to have 25 quid each way, uh, Alfred Boucher, currently trading at around the 13 to 2 mark, I think. So we're going to look to have 25 quid each way um, to take advantage of the seven places. He is a horse that has turned himself inside out this. Alfred yeah, now Boucher. he's a four-pound penalty for the other day, but it mightn't be overly burdens burdensome. I, I really, you'd think he'd have to he'd have to be in the first seven. William Buick rode him the other day, didn't he? When they backed him, yeah, um, and it was third time lucky for Ian Williams, who, funnily enough, he was with Henry Candy. He had he had twenty-five races for Henry, and he started off over all sorts of trips. They couldn't quite get the best out of him, but you go to Warwickshire and you go to Ian Williams' yard and. He's just so good, but he stays. And you, it's a very interesting point that Barry makes. You do see it at Galway. You see it in Ireland quite a bit. You don't. See, we see it here, but in you know, not to what you know, eighty races under a penalty and stuff like that. We don't often see it in festival weeks, and we don't. I mean, m maybe Johnson might do something like that, but we don't often see it in these premier races. Now, William basically didn't want. He, I mean, he, he knew two furlongs out on Thursday or whenever it was that he was going to win on Wednesday. And he's had three days to back up. He's a course winner, as we well know. The extra trip shouldn't necessarily be a problem. Uh, just looking at his program, if he goes and wins this, there's a horse called Halifon that beat him at Chester, also in the yard, who's going to look one of the best handicapped horses anywhere. Put that in your notebook. It is very interesting, isn't it? And Ian Williams would be one trainer that you... The only times we see it done is during maybe Royal Ascot, when you go in the... Um, at, at, at the Ascot Stakes and then you back up on the Saturday. And I'm pretty sure that Williams does that with Reshoon. Yeah, and horses like it's a good that. Good example. A lot of horses do that, don't they? Alfred horses. Boucher. Would he be in your top three, Robbie? Uh, nah, I have five in the play spot. The play spot that I am very much out of. Okay. Um, Earl of Tyrone. Right. Right. I mean, tell us about this chap because obviously yeah, he is very are, well punted. There are a lot of similarities between him and Sonny Boy Liston last year, both on the same Dan Royal listed race. Um, he's actually rated. Five pound lower than Sunny Boy Liston was, but put up a one pound better RPR than Sunny Boy Liston did when winning that race. Yeah. And Raise You come out and won a Group Three since beat Search for Song easily. I mean, he's clearly well handicapped. Two, he's never had a winner in in Britain before, but he's only had six runners. Anyone who watches Irish racing knows this guy is top draw. He's His Irish strike rate is. Crazy good. What, to me, yeah. And yeah. the, the petite Coco ran year. well in the week, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, La Petite Coco. Which I thought she ran really well. He's 34% this year, 28% the last five years. Um, I've gone Garzi as well. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't five to one. Oh, I love Garzi in this. I mean, he was twelve to one a couple of days ago. They're it? all shortening up, Barry. The front two, aren't they? I mean, Candleford's coming in for money as well. I mean, we've seen all week, haven't we? Like seven to one the field. Now we're talking about a nine to two shot and eleven to two Garzi. These proper gambles, or was this always expected? Yeah, no. The William Haggis um, with both Candleford and uh, Gassy. You know, it's that angle, the Haggis angle, and the handicap. He seems to have nearly every. 
every fancied horse in a handicap recently, um, and obviously already he's on the on the scoreboard with the horse that Holly rode there a little while ago. Earl of Tyrone, though, is, is Betty away, six, Gassy, six, Candleford, eight, eight, 12, um, Alfred Boucher, Akota Sushi, Mikey Sheehan. That's been a popular selection. Joseph O'Brien's runner during the week. He's 14.5, same price for Trawler, man. Eugen Glenn is 20, 25. A license. The Irish have a strong hand here. I think it's around a six to four chance for Ireland to win this year's renewal, like last year. Irish Raiders going for a sixth win since 2014. Uh, of course, Joe Lawrence won it a couple of years ago. So he's got license in there as well. Yeah, Okita Susha is very interesting indeed. Uh, it was one of the strangest races I'd seen for a long time at the Coro last time when the stable went, went clear and basically stayed. There was Leperstown, of course, wasn't it? Uh, and that he sort was of, miles back. I mean, it was a very interesting um, run. <laughs> to say the least. But he's got Royal Ascot form behind. Get Shirty, who we know the Mighty Gomez opened the start with. There are some horses, as a result, Dan, that are drifting out to a bigger price than you might have expected. He's definitely yeah, one. Yeah, he's the one I've gone with as well, Akita Sushi. I think if you have a look back at the Royal Ascot run in particular behind Get Shirty, I think someone was on earlier saying they yeah, fancy Get Gomez, Shirty, Mighty yeah. Gomez. But I just think he had so much ground to make up on that occasion. He did a lot of good running late. He's kind of got similar form given he was second to raise you at the Curra, so he would have a bit to find on Earl of Tyrone based on that, you'd think. But as you say, the run last time, just forget that run. It was bizarre. He was staying on strongly. It stank but a bit, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was not great. Sorry to say. Um, so Akita Sushi, and then I did like, but I don't like the big drift on Ever Present, really, on the exchange. That's another horse that's very interesting so, for the Harringtons. Yeah, you know, the, the, I needed the run back at Down Royal. I think that had been after a going operation as well. Yeah. I just was a. I, I thought he'd be a bit more confident behind the horse. A confirmed stayer, isn't he? So. He's an interesting horse. If it, uh, you know, if the if the prize money thing wasn't an issue, then which it is at the moment, this guy would definitely have gone jumping for them. But he's a he's a very talented animal. Behind a uh, Sagar Harding Kill Crut and a couple of bumpers. So it, there you go. There you go. But there no, so kind of those two. But Akita Su should be the main one. Okay. All right. So we get the selections out of the way. It's Garcy for me on top. The classy Garcy. As everyone called him, uh, it just, everything went wrong, didn't it? At, at uh, uh, behind Get Shirty at Haydock last time, they've kept him for this. There is some reservation we're led to believe in the camp about him actually staying, but he's half brother to a horse called Midra, who won over a mile five. I don't think it's a problem. And that chap was by Dubawi. This chap is by a stouter uh, sire, indeed. I'm trying to remember who's that sire is. Let's go down. Who is it? See the stars. Yeah, he's a see the stars out of a Monson mare. I mean, Garcy surely gets home in this, doesn't he? Um, and Rob, we were on watching that show, weren't we? Yeah, he was and well unlucky. He was a good thing beaten. Yeah, he was well unlucky. Um, you can see why he's uh, got a lot of fans. He's a bit short in a race like this now for me. Yeah, well, yes. I mean, let's have... All oh, right, that, that's a great... He's not even there, the Rob. Haggis first string either. Winning favourites in this in the last 10 years. Only one outright. Uh, who was that? Remind two me. years ago. Oh, um... um two years ago. Ah, everyone out there's doing it going, hey. shall I put you out of your misery? Who no. trained it? Roger trained it. Vivarian. Roger Varian. Roger Varian. Um, the Fijera. Fijera. I wrote about him in the preview analysis. We got there in the end. I went blank. Um, <laughs> and he also won the Copper Horse Handicap that Akita Sushi suggested. He just had that brilliant year, didn't he? F yeah. Fijera, yeah. He was talented, but, but a little bit fragile. Uh, okay. I mean, well, I've got him on top. I've got a flyer in there. If I had to have my three, let's get your threes in. You Listen, we do it for big races. We should do it. I'm going to go around the panel. So, guys, I'll give you a minute to think about your uh, the dangers maybe to your horses. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to take on our, our, our Tyrone. I'm going to go with Garcy. I'm going to go with, uh, I think, Akita Sushi will be there for Joseph and Mikey Sheehy. And I think Global Storm for Charlie Appleby and William Buick. I think I wrote two back, he's a big prize. He was in this last year, I think he got given too much to do. He wants a trip, it's the sort of group horse that might take this out. He's got loads of experience, I like him. Buick's on 20 to one shot, shouldn't be that big. Danny Archer, you're one, two, three in the 2022 Ebor. Akita Sushi, Garcy, and then I've got to stick with Ever Present. But I would also, I think Paul Keeley gives a mention to license of Ger Lyons. That is another Irish one to watch. But I just Two think... runners for Ger in this race, one win and a place. Mm. So I would give a shout out to that, but they'd be my three. All right, okay, so we're kind <coughs> of agreeing. Uh, Robbie? Yeah, Lyons, I like license as well. Um, most unexposed horse in the field, but Lyons is only two from 67 in Britain. Made that 68 off the Doctor's Emp earlier. Yeah. 
since 2013. It's not uh, gone the way that they... Yeah, they used to have winners over him. Yeah, it sure did. I did. mean, yeah, we had the Chibli Park winner a while ago. He obviously did have Mr. Gia to win this three years ago. There you go. But, uh, yeah, he's one of the five I've got in the place, but I've also got the aforementioned Garzi and uh, uh, Tyrone. Uh, give a shout-out to Yuke and Glenn as well. Oh. Because he's actually... Uh, I mean, he ran, he ran in this off 116 last year. He's off 102. I mean, he's down to much more work. G Rod's put this up for a, a lot. One of the, he said one of oh, the yeah, we, we of put, the season we, runs in the E ball. That's what he said. Yeah, we, we put him up as a top rated on RPRs for this. Um, unlucky at Goodwood last time, I thought. Um, interesting. And uh, the other one was John Leeper. Oh, uh, he on. ran in the City of York. Oh, that's John Smith Silver Cup Stakes. That was the key trial last year because the first, second, fifth, sixth, and seventh. All ran in that last year. Now, John Leeper's the only one. Some shrewdies like him for that. Are you going like S H R O O D? Shrewd. Could be. You you look like one of them. I think, well, he's the big. He's out to twenty to one on Betfair Sportsbook. So I think if that, John Leeper big. wins this, Barry, I need a desperado man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I couldn't have him on my mind to be brutally honest. Uh, he's wouldn't be one for me. Uh, if you're asking me, my tree, it's Alfred Boucher over Trawler Man over Global Storm. Oh, Global Storm for you as well. Like that. Mm. Yeah, you get the feeling he's been running behind your beers and he's been sacrificed a little bit, making the running a few times. I don't he's just he's just the sort of horse that if you go away from the sort of like more progressive Garcies, if you like, and Earl of Tyrone's, he's just the sort of horse that could take this out. And I think they'll switch the tactics up from last time. Interesting no one going for Candleford. So impressive, wasn't he? First time out of Royal Ascot. And then of course he went to the Soapy Stevens race at Newmarket. Just never really looked happy. It stunk of a second run back that. I could, again, a bit su su surprised by that. Trawler man, he's one of your horses, sort of Barry, because you put him up last time. He wears the hood for yeah, good, good reason, one. but he kept finding, didn't he, last time? Yeah, he certainly did. He's a tough, uh, he's a tough cookie for sure. Uh, and he, he's what well, he got up. We went up, I think, around four pounds for that win in Goodwood. Um, yeah, he's a good profile for this race. And Frankie, in, he'll be up out of trouble, that's for sure, because he likes to get on with things. So, uh, um, yeah, he's got good place um, prospects for sure. All right, you've heard our one, two, threes. Let's get out to the community out there. What are you saying? Darren Walker, good to see you again, Darren. Oh, goodness me, today is the day for John Leeper. The best bred horse, I think, anywhere on the planet, of course, isn't he? But he's an absolute nutbag. Are you thinking it's the fast pace then, put him to sleep finally? And this is just the sort of thing that might wake him up. You know, he's got interesting York form, hasn't he? Uh, Nedster comes back on. Great social. I hope you saw that. We put that up. Nedster, uh, you were weighing in with Barry around about the 51 to 1 we were saying on the sports book for uh, the Ark and Baid. Do you think Garcy will be the one? And license each way as well. Very unexposed. Frizzy Red with me and Barry. Says Global Storm for the E ball. Fingers crossed. And Matthew Samuel comes on. Uh, Matthew, very interesting. Raymond Tusk and John Leeper for me. We're interesting. We're going for some of our favourite sort of also. I mean, if you like, you can, Glenn. Old Raymond Tusk has got to get a shout, hasn't he? Fourth in it, I think, 2019. Raymond Tusk, a bit of a legend. but uh... He is a bit of a legend. I thought he was going to make a better hurdler, I have to say. He's just, he's just, he's, maybe it's the ground with him during the winter or the trip, I don't know. But uh, I haven't seen him do it so far. Can I give you a couple of quotes while we're waiting for this last race? Is that possible? Please do. Oh, uh, thank you very much. I shall then. Um, <coughs> William Haggis on Sulcum. Uh, he's talented but quirky. Could he be a stakes horse? I don't know. But once they get up and running, he's probably thinking about the handicapper listing there, isn't he? Because he was off. He was. Uh, but or maybe he's pouring some. Because that won the Mel Rose, like it was, you know, an absolute joke race, didn't it? Uh, so he's he's poured a bit of cold water on that. But seemingly it was the plan and. Uh, Goodwood was not the way to judge him last time. So, I don't know, jury's still out on whether he's a cup horse. Uh, Charlie Appleby, talking about Silver Knot, who won our Solario Stakes at 2.40. Nice horse. That Newbury novice is strong form. That's the Chaldean race, of course. He progressed there. Um, making all wasn't the way to ride him at Kempton last time. Uh, he hung left a little bit. Pat gave him a lovely ride. Pat Dobbs, of course, got the ride today. Now, if I had to give him a target, let's look forward to it. Royal Lodge. Or well, we could stick to seven furlongs. So you're talking about Royal Lodge, you're talking about Dewhurst. Um, but the ground was too quick for him at, uh, at Newbury. So they're suggesting he could be an autumn horse going forward. If you like Silver Knot, they certainly do at Godolphin. That's some uh, housekeeping then. Uh, what prices have we got for e uh, Aesop's Fable again, Barry? Remind me, has there been any love for that, Dew uh, that Dewhurst 8 to 1? He was 8 from 20 for the Dewhurst and 14 from 33 for the 2,000 guineas and we put him in an 87 from 20 for the middle park. 
So we've seen some very, very good horses today, haven't we? Favourite two-year-old so far? Favourite two-year-old so uh, far? I'll put you on the spot there. Little Big Bear. But that's so obvious, isn't it? Oh, do you want me no, from today? No, that's fine. Or? That's totally fine. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, he's just by far the, the best. Is he, he a guinea sauce? He's uh, bred to be, isn't he? Uh, not on the sire side, but he on the He's dam. a no-nay never. He's a no-nay never, yeah. but on the dam side, it's ten furlongs, Barry. And he just reminded me of George Washington. He's, As, uh, did, did you see sorry. Kieran Fannon? We've, we had a front page story with him saying it, 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 he's like uh, George Washington, who of course Kieran had so much to do with. The head carriage reminded me a bit of George. Right, that's a bit before my time, actually. George, George he Washington. said if you've got a horse like that, you should be winning a guineas. It's interesting. How many uh, Group 1 winners known and never had over further than uh, over a mile of further? He's had alcohol free, but I can't, I can't really think of many others. Danny's looking. I'll have a quick look. Danny's looking. We'll put you to the test here, Dan. Cause... Who's calling me Ebor, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> not from not two blokes, not me, that's for sure. Yeah, all right, well, I'll have Maybe ten sovereigns. Did he ever, he didn't I, win over further, did nah, he? That was sort of nice no, cut. no, mm, ten sovereigns was proper speed. Seven, Richard for seven furlongs. Arizona didn't. Black Beard was six, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, you're right. Yeah, it's Trillium. Only three. Tri what did Trillium? She won. Yeah, that was a five. Was five so, yeah, so. Trillium's a very good. But these are only two year olds, there's no mile races. The Platinum Queen had a beauty yesterday. Yeah, it was a lovely run, yeah. Lovely run. Yeah, I was. Don't oh, be afraid I, to go to the non with two rolls, basically. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I know Dramatise was really disappointing in the Lava, but I, I think she'd have yeah, showed, up, she'd have showed up better in the non I me. think she was probably joining the wrong place and she was just too keen over the trip, wasn't I she? I think she'd have we'll run, see how run, run right in the non still. If, well, there you go. All right, let's get some social love in as well. Let's see what it is. Uh, we might have a point of conversation coming up here. Uh, OK, Dimp Dimp comes on. Um, all right, more intelligent than the name might suggest. I would agree with that comment. If winning the arc is important, see the stars sets the standards of racehorses, not Frankel. Whoa, that dig of the late Sir Henry not going up to the to the arc, of course. And I guess the thing with Baid, which is why this conversation is raging, is that the temperament of the horse, the constitution of him, is something just out of this world, isn't it? Yeah, he just switches off. I mean, not horses can do that at any trip, and, th and that makes me think that he could win over basically any trip. Johnny Murtagh, straight after as an RTV, says he's a perfect long trip horse, and this, that man would know, right? Yeah. And his best performance yeah. has come when he's been stepped up in trip this year. <sighs> so. It rages on, but see the stars sets but the But I see the stars, the mile, the ten furlongs, then it up It was just spot. a brilliant I'm campaign, you know? wasn't it? And, and, and yeah. really was extremely ambitious as well. All right, have we got a new favourite in the Ebor, Barry? Uh, on the exchange, Gassi is 5.3, clear favourite now, ahead of Erla Tyrone, who's 6. 11.5, Alfred Boucher, 13, Trawlerman, 12, Candleford, 14, Otita, Sushi, 21, Ever Present, Get Sure to You Can Glen, around that mark as well. Licence a bit negative, Ever Present, a few quid for that now into 19. That did look a bit big, John and you wondered, if, you wondered if it's because the first two in the market mm. were being hit a little bit that you might get some value, and they're stepping in a bit for uh, Ever Present, which is not surprising. Get Shirty, of course, the 111 horse. This is, a, as you would imagine, for the prize money, this is extremely exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good rate. You know, the, the prize money deservedly has seen it attract a, a strong field. So but the yeah. Irish says coming up, which has got even more prize money for this. Yeah, what's that worth now? 600 grand. Jeez. Oh, it's great to see though, isn't it? We, we, yeah. Come on, let's enjoy these big prizes, why not? And like you said earlier, York has, York has really, you know, stepped up, hasn't it? Yeah. I've seen some great crowds there as well. I'm not, I haven't seen numbers or anything like that, but every time I've seen a, a wave of it. People have you been to York, say, Rob? I've not been, no. Oh, that's no, a journey no, you must make. It, is it? I, I, you know me though, I don't really go to the course. No, you're always in here. I've been to one in, I've been once in about three years. Yeah, you're in here more than I'm, a lap, I'm already the laptops in here, yeah. and the TVs. I live down the road, partly. Well, of course, absolutely. There's only so far the yeah, bike convenient. goes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Danny Archer, you're a busy man at the moment. What are you doing after this? You going to do the Greyhounds? For yeah, us? really. Yeah, long day today. Wow. I think I've got to try and get a tube home to Morden, so uh, could be fun. Could, could uh, be Spurs fun have won, Barry. One nil against Wolves. It's going well, isn't it? Spurs have won. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Harry Kane with the winner. Harry Kane with the winner. Like the Spurs are absolutely dominating the first half, though. It's like 12 shots to one from Wolves. My son was there today. Well, was Seven-year-old Sebastian. Is he a Watford fan? He certainly is. Yeah. I wonder if that's still going to be the case when I meet him at Marlebone at 5 p.m. I can't have any more Tottenham. I'm not, yeah. I can't that stand would, Tottenham. Oh, I'll tell you what, his godfather's a Tottenham supporter and it, he's, he's, he's loving the fact that he's there today. Uh, Crystal Palace won, Aston Villa won. And the way oh. they celebrated getting a point against us last week was quite embarrassing, really. I'll tell you what, the Brentford bubbles burst. Fulham are doing them 2-0. Yeah. Hmm. 
I don't know what, how Watford are getting on. I'm just trying to look. Anyway, we're going down to the start. Garcia has got the hood on, the famous red hood. Smashed up. Four's favourite on the out right there. Haggis's record in this is the one race. He's churned out from the Dante meeting on, isn't it? Yorkshireman William Haggis. You know, this is, this is where he yeah, aims most of his three good horses. Well, no, of no. course he doesn't. But he's born and bred there, but spent most of his time in Newmarket. But he's never won this race. He's quite public out there. Mm. And he's won the Melrose now three times. And Garcia's going. He's got 10 runners in the past decade, one place. Yeah, that's quite alarming. Weird, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, he's too good a trainer not to have one eventually. But. Well, and I think this is it. Your colleague, Paul Keeley, Garcy Price, stunning. Stable jockey not on, forts once, softish ground. Is he tweeting away, Amazingly Kills, is he? strong. Mm, interesting, he's tweeting away. Big opinions. So. Well, absolutely. If, I mean, if he's in the bar, it sometimes can get a bit colourful. Uh -huh. Kills on, uh, on Twitter. Trying to look for anything else that we haven't mentioned. Let's go down. There's some right characters in this. And I mean, Benno was, could be quite interesting for Jim Crowdy, the other Joseph O'Brien horse. Fancy man. I've seen a bit of love for that in the... In the chat as well. Now, the excellent Kevin Morley in his trend says one horse meets all of them, and it's Rodrigo Diaz. Rodrigo Diaz. Who's Maybe. been a bit disappointing mm. from a win perspective, hasn't he? Needs, isn't he? he's further, than not he? Third to Quickthorn, was he? I think he's better on the all-weather as well. Why is Valley Forge 50 to 1? That was a win in your yeah, well, in. last year, didn't so, it? So mm. you're in. Oh, it's because of the weights, isn't it? Of course. I read oh, an article about this because he, it, 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 he's running from he gets penalised, doesn't he? Of course. Yeah, yeah, he's running from out of the way. eight-pound run. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, he, but he gets in because he won the Melrose. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, winning you're in. Yeah. Sh Strangely, Enemy was very strong this morning, but has completely disappeared from uh, the top of the markets. But it was into the other Ian Williams horse, who, again, was a bit unlucky in the Cigaro stakes and then found Quick Tom too good, didn't he? Mm. Can't have Get Shirty off 110. Hey, uh, the wide times, draw's not a problem there, by the way, is it? No, no I don't think it is. No, I mean... Was it uh, eight out of last ten when yeah. it's been drawn? In fact, oh. if you're on the inside, that tends to be a problem. Who's in the one poke? Let's have a look. Max, oh, it's Max Vega. Vega. I'm glad we mentioned him. Rob Ormby having a season of his life, still. Uh, so he's he, again on back class. He's interesting, isn't he? But, but but does he want a bit more juice? I don't know. Come on, who else haven't we mentioned? There's got to be some. Trawler man. I mean, you guys spoke about it. he didn't for, for Frankie de Tory. Um, yeah, we uh, Barry put him up. Mm. And we were on last on the show. I think Kate Tracy might have done it as well. And, Beat Barg Door, who is uh, aforementioned by Wilders over there, and he, he, he's yeah. still got races in him, that chap. And despite the first time early and him pulling, he kept pulling it out. And that was obviously over a mile six, so in a key race for this. Uh, so, yeah, you know, he is interesting. He's one of Barry's top three. Uh, we, we, we'd all love to see you can Glen win, put your money aside, you know. I think, I think he's got a half decent shout. A nine year old winning this. A seven year old's won it, litigant. For Joseph Joe Chute. Tweet, yeah. The departing Joseph Chute. I think he's on a good mark, you can, Glenn, to be honest. Well, he, it should be run to suit, shouldn't he? Who's going to lead? I think There's he's better question. than he was two years ago when he was rated 102. OK. All right, hang on a minute. Who uh, can be? Well, Max Vega has been prominent in the past. I'm trying to think who else would. Bear with me, Get shirty, trawler, man. They'll all be up front. OK. There's a couple thrown into the leading hat, because this has a mark on the exchange, of course. Uh, let's go down, let's go down, let's find some pace. Where's it going to come? You usually look for a Johnson horse, don't you? Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, Max Vega could potentially be up there. Uh, any con there are no confirmed front runners, according to my map. Hmm. Licensed, Earl of Tyrone. Earl of Tyrone's not going to want to hang around. Shanro? Mm, no, yeah, let's hope we don't have a muddling pace. Because certainly if you're on Garcy, you want to see him break first and foremost. Yeah. Do you think yeah, something will try to do a quick turn? <laughs> hey, right, we're going to go off in front here. There's no pace in the race. Let's bowl along in front and see how we get on. Let's do an Art Power, you mean, as well, who ran such a big race, didn't he? He's getting horses out of the comfort zone. I backed... What's the name of the Ellison great. horse? Isn't it great on a Saturday to have Hashtag. a big handicap, the, few, the, the feature race? Yes. You know, <laughs> with, with, what, 20-odd runners? How many runners have we? 22 runners? It's, a, it's the opposite of what we had last Saturday, Barry, when you were sunning yourself in Portugal. Uh, the, the, uh, the Great St Wilfred wasn't the 335, it was the Hungerford Stakes, because they were down yeah. on runners, but it should have been, we felt like it should have been. I wouldn't no. normally say it because yeah. of handicap, but there are like some horses here that could be maybe like Group 1 horses, so that, that's what makes it. Name them. Uh, well, just Ghazi, Akita Sushi, uh, Earl. I don't know about Earl of Tyrone. Well, I mean, they're, they've got the Group 1 entries down the line. Have and them. obviously, the last two winners of this have either won or placed in the Ira St Ledger, so... <laughs> You well, That's why it's a top handicap. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's like old Melbourne Cup, isn't it, basically? Mm, Muntahar went 
did he go down under? I think Mustajir did as well, didn't they? And again, horses yeah. were, you know, Heartbreak City. Do you remember when he won this for Tony Martin? Certainly. Um, Tiger Cliff, of course, for Lady Cecil. That was a great day. Willing Foe, great. Some, look, the prize money's gone up, and it is, it, is, it is one of the target races that they try and get their horses into, all these trainers. And you're talking about all the big ones there, really. It's only Aiden that hasn't really got one in here. Any chance um, of getting a horse in the stalls? Or? They are taking a while to get them off, aren't they? 3.39, not one horse mm, in the stalls. Do we know why that is? Because I mean, this always happens in horse races. It mate. doesn't often happen at York, though, despite the fact they've got that long walk down, whatever it is, mm. road. Um, hmm, this is this is a definite delay, isn't it? Not well, ideal for the for future. For no apparent race reason. Hmm. Is it to do with the world pools? No. Oh. The world, is the world pool on today? Ooh. I don't know. It was off, it's off. It was uh, Wednesday to Friday. So I don't know why. Yeah. Friday was it? It was a bit strange. Let's get up. Uh, Giovanni De Falco. What a name to finish name. the socials with. Lovely afternoon, all community. Absolutely, Giovanni. Very good. Have you had a good one? Let's hope so. De Falco. What a name. That's some name, isn't it? Juventus player. Must be. <laughs> Falco used to a uh, band as well, weren't they? Got it. Amadeus, I think. They're a big song. <laughs> Where are we going? Oh, I pulled that one out. Falco was a great footballer as well, I think, wasn't he? Giovanni De Falco. Loving that. Yeah, great afternoon. We have had a good afternoon. Falcao. Numbers have been strong as ever. And uh, we got nearly, nearly, aren't we, coming to that autumnal side of the flat season. The narrative is just beautiful. All the way to the champion stakes, of course. So much has been said about the arc. We know what you think. By Ed ought to go. You were told at the start of the season that... It really ought to be the case. Even Paul Keeley has now converted. They've all converted, saying he's been running over the wrong trip. He just looked so impressive, didn't he? And uh, even I feel Princess yesterday, great feel good factor. We've seen some wonderful two year olds. This is when the two year olds, as Barry said, they really get going. Yeah, isn't it? future champions weekend, not far away at Newmarket. Seen him today at the car. Champions, yeah, a couple of very good ones there. Yeah. Aesop's I'm fables. still very annoyed about Hans Anderson there. Uh, we got ha Hans Anderson and Aesop's Fables. Are they connected at all? I was thinking with the names. Sounds yeah, like Hans Anderson was a Danish author. Yeah, exactly. So what was Aesop's Fables? Fables? It was a Greek writer, Aesop, who wrote Fables. Thank you. Nice. I looked that up and Google it. Look at well. the talent I'm in this <laughs> studio. You get the today. Mate, as long as you got it. Look at the talent I'm with. All right. They wrote a good stuff. story in that race, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying. You've done very well, to be fair to you. 20, 20 minutes, I think, since our last race. Stick to headlines, Danny <laughs> Archer. You are good at them. You've carried us. You were the Cabinet of Clowns man. Of course, I was Cabinet you? of Clowns, yeah. That one, no, offense, no comment. Boris. Um, OK. Uh, all right, they're going in. You'll be thrilled to know. I'm going to try and call these home. Bear with me as we go along. Good luck wherever you've decided to play. Barry, a final market update. Is it all about Gassi? He's coming out again. Yeah, 6-2 six, six Gassi, 6-8 six, early Tyrone, 9 candle for 10.5 Alfred, 11.5 Trawler Man, 17 you can Glen, some support for that, ever-present 21. There you have them. I mean, it's a serious puzzle, this, isn't it? And uh, we've tried to help you along the way. Let's hope you've enjoyed this afternoon. We're off air after this, but <clears> let's get absolutely out with a out with a high, shall we? And off, indeed, we do go. And there's a highlight there, isn't it? Look at you, can Glenn, and get shirty from the outside store being anchored right out the back. No confirmed front run, as we said, but perhaps unsurprisingly, Global Storm is up there with Trawler Man. The Godolphin horse is keeping it simple. What's that in third? Is that uh, ever the Tyrone, the Jolly, the Jolly. Uh, Settled in third. We said he didn't want a daughter. I didn't see him being up there. There, other Irish Raiders, Shan Rose up there, Akita Sushi's up there as well. What are you thinking if you're UK and Glenn at the moment, uh, Rob? Is that him at the back? That's him right at the back. <laughs> That's a lot, lot of horses. What's this part, on the outside? It's a trawler, trawler, trawler man. Trawler Frankie. Man. Frankie. He uh, swims against the tide, doesn't he, Frankie? This is like, do you remember when he won the arc? Was it Golden Orb? Yeah. He mm. went all the way yeah. wide, didn't he? And he stayed out wide till he got to the bend. Yeah, yeah, and Star of Seville in the French Oaks, I remember. He's doing it here. Genius, isn't he? Absolutely brilliant. My he Global Storm's well. up there as well. John Leap um, is more prominent than I thought. Fancy yeah, yeah. Man is there. What's this in the red that's up as well? Max Vega. Let's have a look then for some others. Benno out the, the back. Alfred Boucher's following through, uh, following through John Leaper. Okuta Sushi on the outside, ever present on the inside. Gar John Garcia Leaper's second settled. last. I don't want to alarm you guys, but John Leaper has settled. Yeah. We we'll never hear the, the end of this day, from man. some of the from some of the big conspiracy day. theories. Now let's look for Garcia, Rob. Where is he? On yeah. the rail. Uh, he looks like he's pulling uh, Second last arms on the rail. Yeah, he <laughs> wants to go a bit further. What's it? now they know, Barry, what are they saying? No, it's it's pretty much wide open still. 5.7 early Tyrone, 6-2 Gassy, although he's a wall of horses to get by. Six Trawlerman. 
He's the big mover on the in running market at the moment. 11.5 out for Boucher seems to still travel well. This is where we're turning in now then, Barry, and this is where some of the jockeys will start to get a bit nervy and start to make their moves. I can see License is doing it uh, for Joe Lyons and, uh, yeah. and Gary Carroll. He fancies... Look at Alfred Boucher. This is the horse that won only three days ago over, over a little bit further on the bridle, pretty much. Akita Sushi comes wide. Candleford out the back. He's got loads to go. Enemy out yeah, the back. Over Raymond side. Tusk there. But at the moment, it's well, Frankie going, and Global Storm. Global Storm's come near side with the Earl of Tyrone at the moment you've got to say he's the one John to Leaper's on. cruising John Leaper's absolutely yeah, on, cruising no 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 desperado time okay here comes Alfred Butcher looking for Garcia he's on the bridle Tom mark on oh, down the middle but out. he's got loads to do Global Storm Glenn's will keep going so well where's well. the UK Alfred oh, Boucher no, come on, on PJ here comes the Boucher here comes hey. the Hyacinth Boucher look at this coming through Ian Williams had the plan surely not is this going to be the big hitter against the Earl Garcia hasn't got home. Global Storm still there. It's a one-two for Barry. This is ridiculous. Oh, yeah, he says Barry. He's only got a nearly oh. evil. Global Storm's coming back at the line. Oh, no, Toro in third, but this is magnificent. Trawler man or the boot. Oh, oh, Trawler man. Global Storm was in Trawler man. Trawler man. Trawler man's gone up, I think. Oh. <laughs> Frankie's done it. Oh, my Lord. Well, it, you, you had a three, Barry. The two of them up there. I think this head's down. Oh. Oh, that is a bobber. I, I tell you what, I went to New Decibel territory there because that was an amazing shout. The Earl is definitely third. You can cleanse one. Yeah, it looks like Trawler Man's done it. If you're looking at the head on, is that quite the line? What's it saying on the exchange, Barry? Four is on in the photo. He's four is on in the photo. Tell you what. The charity nearly nicked an absolute bundle there, but your other selection has gone and won it, Barry. Uh, the Earl of Tyrone, he ran a blinder, Rob. Yeah, no excuses, really. Good position throughout. Oh, I tell you, I got excited then, as you could probably see. I think tell. Alfred Boucher wasn't even going to run. Uh, William said after he won the other day that he, was, he wasn't going to run in this. This is this is a great race. It Surprise! He's hit the front. This Trawler man's done well to knuckle back down, actually. If he has got it, up, it reminds you a bit of quick on last year, doesn't it? It was a that was a close finish, wasn't mm. it? Sunny Boy Liston. Mm. Uh, the Tyrone's run well. I think get shirty set off from the back. God, I'd settle for a dead heat here. Yeah, absolutely. No, they're taking their time about it, I guess, are they? But the market, and again, it I don't always know with the exchange. Uh, let's see if we've gone to the cover all of a sudden for Ryan Moore's four timer. So uh, let's see if we can get back on where we're, a little bit of York out there. We'll keep on the exchange. Barry, either way, great shout, man. Um, the two of your three have been up there all the way to the line. It looked like Alfred Butcher had it all the way, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, Frankie's won. Frankie's won it. Oh, Frankie wins the Ebor. Look at this, and he loves it. Will we see a flying dismount for the second time this week at York? <sighs> Tell you what, Barry, that's some ride, isn't it? Going like the Golden Horn route like he did there. And this is a horse that keeps on finding. If you're asking the wrong man that at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you put him up I, in your. You look. You you gave him. Well, a... I tossed up which one of them, and I ended up back in the second. And it was a short head, literally in my mind, which one of them I was back in. <laughs> I've just gone the wrong way there, so I'm a little bit deflated. I'm glad the show is finishing now. All right, fair enough. All right, it might be the same case for the guys next to me as well. Look, you put up the Earl as well. Rob is one of your three. He's run really well, hasn't he? Yeah. But... Uh, Garcy just didn't get home. He was a bit keen and he was on the bridle still a mile four out. Just didn't get John home. John Leap has run well. Um, you can Glenn was really unlucky again. He, again. It always is, isn't it? You can Glenn as you can. Get shirt, he's right. outran expectations off top weight. Yeah. All right. I was going to different decibels there. I'm happy it's ending as well because I can get my voice back. Danny, it's been a great afternoon with you, man. Yeah, thanks very much, Dave. Thanks to Robbie and Barry as, again, as always. Yeah, strong panel. <laughs> Wilders, happy days. Looking forward to Al Panista yeah. in the art now. Yeah, look forward to that. Look forward to the boxing tonight. AJ versus Usyk, oh, of yes. course. Loads of sport out there, of course. Barry, great weekend. I'll see you next weekend. Yeah, I look forward to it. I imagine there will be one or two Desperados being cracked in Dublin right now. All right, good luck to all of you for the rest of the day. There's still more racing out there. We've been Racing Post Live in association with Betfair. I've been Dave Orton. See you next weekend.